Yeah, I got that right turn, we're good. Let's uh, meet up at the compound group up. That's 10 4. Good little driver, straight on through. What's up, Av Geeks? Welcome to the Husky National Stole Series here at Swamp Stole in Jennings, Louisiana. I'm Ryan Dombrowski. This is the intrepid Matthew Peterson. Say hi, Matt. Hey, everybody. And we are excited to bring the finals, the Swamp Stole finals to you today. Getting ready, getting ready to go. Got to get my mouth warmed up. Get some, get some exciting bow, announcement. Bow, bow, bow. Who in the crowd's beep, beep, pumped beep. today about Watching some airplanes. Comment vas-tu, mon ami? Welcome, bon matin. Welcome to Swamp Stole 2021. <laughs> I don't know what he said other than the last part. So we're excited to bring some action for you today. In just a minute, I'm going to recap the scores from yesterday's semifinals. We're going to walk you through the rules. We're going to get you all stoled up. Stoled up? I don't know. I'm, we're, up. we're winging it here. Hey, airplane puns. <laughs> we're winging it here today. But first... Is it time? Should we do? Should we do the the national we anthem thing? We have we to do the national anthem thing. thing. So we're gonna do that. We'll be back with you in just a second. We're gonna get this thing off and running. Outstanding. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Matthew Peterson, the event organizer for Swamp Stole. If everyone could please stand, remove your hats, and join me for a quick word of prayer for our competitors here today. Gracious Father, thank you for this weather, this beautiful weather that you've given us. Thank you for letting us live in America where we are able to come together and do the things we enjoy. Lord, watch over these competitors as they compete today. Keep them safe. And all of our spectators today, keep them safe on their drive home. Please bless this event and bless General Aviation. Amen. If everyone will please remain standing for the National Anthem.
All right, everybody, so we're getting very excited. The tension of today's competition is literally hanging in the air. Oh, yeah. Believe it. And before we get started today, as the pilots get prepped, judges get prepped, everything's making it, uh, we're getting all our final doodads, cameras, things sorted out. want to talk a little bit about how this competition works. If you weren't here yesterday, you got to understand how this works. So the way this works, the way National Stoll works, if you've ever seen a spot landing competition at your local airport, it's like that turned up to 11. So you'll see the pilots taxi their aircraft to that white line there with the flags whipping in the breeze. A line judge will give them the go ahead to take off. They'll head off into the wild blue yonder and you'll see judges running along the line to see exactly where they departed the earth. We take that measurement, keep that in our back pocket. They go around the pattern, standard traffic pattern. We've got air bosses here that act like the, the controllers to keep everyone safe. And they come in on final, sometimes a little low, how long it takes for you to get stopped. You are going to see some incredibly short landings today. You may see landings shorter than 50 feet. You definitely will probably see landings shorter than 50 feet. A little bit of aviation nerd stuff, a little knowledge for you. That's shorter than a F-14 Tomcat is nose to tail. So you could land on an F-14 Tomcat. You could land. Some of these guys and gals can land on the, could land on the back of, of the plane from Top Gun. So, so we were talking about naval aviators yesterday and who are probably some of the best aviators in the world in the U.S. naval aviation. And these guys could literally run an entire contest on the deck of an aircraft carrier. Yeah, our planes are going a little slower. So that's a little bit of an advantage. But yes, we could run. Maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll do. Maybe that's the next stop. We could. We could. We could have one on an aircraft carrier. I. We, we could do that. Where's that one in San Diego? Yeah. We could do that yeah. one that museum. We could do it right there. Anyway, so we <laughs> land on the line. We get it stopped as fast as possible, and then what we do is we take that first score that we put in our back pocket, combine it with the second score, and that's your overall score for the round. We're looking for the best score out of three. And I want to give you a little rundown of how things shook out yesterday. Yesterday, conditions were pretty similar to today. They were hot. That's right. We had a high density altitude. We also had feet. a pretty good headwind. That's right. A little bit of a crosswind. Yep. Pilots were complaining. They wanted a little bit more of a headwind because it makes for a shorter landing, but Absolutely. it wasn't bad. Today it's blowing, a little bit variable right now, actually looking like we've got a little bit of a tailwind, which is something that's gonna extend those distances if that doesn't resolve before the competition starts. So let me run down the scores for you today. Of, of, sorry, let me run down the scores from yesterday for you. We've got different classes here at National Stoll. And the first class that you'll see today is heavy touring. These are as the name implies, heavier aircraft, four-seat aircraft, sometimes more. You're going to see one that is incredibly rare. But the heavy touring class yesterday, semifinal results. First place coming into today was Warren Grobelar in a 1955 Cessna 180 with 270.6 feet. William Gilstrap in a 182, very similar aircraft. 391 combined score. Andrew Patry, also in a 182, a few years older at 1959. 397. And Charlie, Charlie Ross, 1954 Helio Courier, which is a legendary aircraft. And, and Matt, I found out that the Courier here today is serial number one. Get out. Yeah. The very the first one first made. one ever made. Helio Courier, kind of a legendary uh, backcountry aircraft. 472 feet combined yesterday. So Warren's in the lead of the four competitors in that class today. 
Let's keep going down the line. Light touring. So these are airplanes that you may have trained in if you're a pilot. Cessna 172, 170, maybe a maybe a Cherokee. Not a Cherokee 180s here uh, this weekend, and that's not a very classic stole airplane. No, not at all. Jeff is here in his 180, and he is throwing up some outstanding numbers. Um, let, let's go over Jeff's score from yesterday because it is just amazing that he's getting that done in a Cherokee 180 aircraft. Yeah, Cherokee 180 again, not something you you think of. So we'll go down the line. Jeff Pohl. 1955 Cessna 170 Bravo model, 232 feet. That's a that's a good score for Jeff. Um, he's, he has done better, but I'm telling you what, he's an outstanding score. Now, Jeff Pohl is out here in a tail dragger. Correct. And myself and Kenny Monger are out here in nose wheels. So let's, so talk, about, little, let's talk about you. And, little, little, yeah, let's talk about you. So Kenny, 1957 Cessna 172. That's right. 335. That's right. Colonel Matthew Peterson. 471. 471. You guys have this. It's the same. It's like the ident it's like an identical plane. Almost. Sort of yes and sort of no. And this yeah. was a talk that I was having with Mr. Joe from Arkansas last night. My plane is stock. Mm. In other words, I don't have a leading edge. Uh, there's a, an outstanding leading edge that you can buy. Uh, Kenny has also got the vortex generators sure. all across the top of his. He's even got them on the tail to make his, his rudder authority better. Um, and so Kenny and I, we have the quote-unquote exact same aircraft. Uh, <laughs> Kenny has some add-ons to his Get a little aircraft. extra. Sure. And I'm going to use that as my excuse as to why I can't beat But here, Kenny 470, Martin. I mean, I'm, I'm joking with you, but 471, again, that combined score. Let's, let's break it down. Uh, your best so, takeoff, 247 feet. Excellent. No. Yeah, 247 feet. Best landing, 211. 211. And I can tell you as a competitor, you're always looking for that next one. So I, I worked real hard to break 500 feet. The 500-foot mark, because, of course, lower is better here, guys. Shorter is mm -hmm. better. 500 feet was, was that threshold I was trying to break, and I broke that yesterday. So that was a new personal best for me. And 211 in competition, getting a, a score in the books less than 200 feet, that's the next goal. You're always looking to improve, always looking for that next goal. But the big debate that I'm having with myself, Ryan, and, mm -hmm. I, and I'll get your opinion on this, oh. do I come off of the stock? Because right now I've got a stock 57 Cessna. But if I start changing it and I start putting things on it, it won't be stock anymore. Well, I don't want to. I, I don't want to get you in trouble with your wife, but I have an idea, and that idea is that you keep this one stock, and you buy another one. Uh, see, okay, where is she? She's right back there. She's probably going to glare at. You. Yeah. Oh, well, there's this screen in the place that's, that's good. So she can't see she me. Can block the stink eye. So let's talk. So light touring class, very similar to what you might be training in if you're a pilot or thinking about becoming a pilot. Bush class. Now, this is kind of where things start to get a little interesting in terms of purpose-built aircraft for what we're doing here today. And I want to put, oh, we, sorry, almost forgot. Jeffrey Abrams in that Cherokee 180, oh, 623 yes. feet. Yes. That's insane. I just want to be clear. Like, we were talking yesterday about this. Basically, what that shows me is in the hands of, a, of the right pilot, even a Cherokee 180, which is not made for stole. At all. It's not made for stole. That Cherokee 180, uh, you could get it in an, almost any airport in the country. Exactly. And what's even better is that Cherokee 180 can take four full-grown people. Because I don't know if you've noticed, Ryan, you know, we get kind of big down here. The Boudin, oh, I've noticed. Boudin is a sometimes food. and But that Cherokee 180 can take four passengers and their luggage, and, and it's got good range, and you can take off and take everybody on a little vacation. You can go just anywhere in the country in a Cherokee 180. And then in the hands of the, of the right person, like Jeff, you can land in three, 350 feet. Absolutely. Which is just incredible. So, super, I mean, it's just crazy. It's crazy to think. I don't think we think about that. Uh, I think a lot of times as pilots are like, oh, like I want to go land at this grass strip somewhere, but I can't do it because I don't have a Super Cub or right. I don't have a, a you know, Husky, uh, Aviat Husky. We don't have something like that. Well, that, I think that's false, right? I think, obviously, you have to do the math. You have to be a proficient pilot, whatever. But some of these, uh, watching this competition this weekend has broken some of those stereotypes Absolutely, for me. it has. Absolutely. And he's definitely a pilot favorite and a crowd favorite. And uh, let's talk about Bush. Yeah, let's talk about Bush. So, again, we're talking about Bush pilot. 
class, the Bush class, these are airplanes that are a little more classically this Bush flying, what you'd think of when you think of like, you know, Johnson Creek over, over on the west side of the country there. Uh, first place, Kevin Johnson, 190 feet combined. Yes. Whew. Incredible. Right after that, Austin Clemens, he's a new one. We can talk about him a little bit. Austin Clemens in a 2011 Aviat Husky with a reversible pitch prop. He's got that Delta prop. I watched him go. He land, He was practicing last night in the sunset. It was one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. I was right up on the line there. He came down. He landed. He threw, literally threw the airplane into reverse. Got it stopped and started going backwards. Uh, pretty impressive. Pretty impressive. Pretty loud. Yeah. Uh, so he came in at uh, 224 feet. Right after that, Sean Francis in another Husky, 341 feet. David Weinstein, another Husky. 405 feet. So here's what you're going to see. Austin Clemens last night. Let's talk about him for a second. He's kind of one of the new up-and-comers. 18-year-old kid. 1,600 hours of flying. 1,600 hours at 18 years old. So That's a lot of hours. I don't have that. I'm not 18 anymore, and I don't have anything close. And he was out here. It was like watching any other sport. He'd come in, boom, land, Bam! Get it stopped. Hit the, hit, hit the, the reverse. Hit the reverse. Get he get stopped, and then his dad would come out to the cockpit and be like, "All right, here's what we gotta do next this time around. Go again." It's important to have a coach. And he was coaching him just like anyone else, and he went around and around and around, just putting in the work because you know there is only 34 feet separating Austin. And, from Kevin. And that's something to talk about. All of these scores are really, really close. Super we tight. We've got some really good competition going on here. All these pilots are super close, and that's why you saw them out practicing this morning. Yeah, and, they've and been going like, a lot. And you're like, John, John Wisdom was out here beating the pattern today. And you said, well, haven't, haven't you gotten enough? And he says, no. No, they're super, com super, super competitive, these guys. Let's talk about the next class. So Bush class, kind of the standard certificated aircraft. Lots of Huskies in that class. Let's move to the experimental Bush class. Same kind of general sense, right? Airplanes that are built for this kind of work, but That's now right. we're moving into experimental, which means that they could be built. Literally, some people may be building these in their homes. Yes. They may be buying a kit. They, they are able to be modified more aggressively because the rule set with the FAA is, differently, is different. Right. This class at Swamp Stole, Lots of legend, mother of all cub models. That's right. Legend Aircraft makes a, an aircraft called the mother of all cubs. And uh, you're going to see they're all painted very, very pretty, prettily. Yes. And one even has gun racks on the wings. That's right. You'll Let see John Wisdom out here, the mother of all cubs. He'll have gun racks on it. That's how you know it's him. And we talked yesterday. What do you keep in your gun rack? Not always a gun. <laughs> snacks snacks you yeah know, maybe snacks. A, a sweatshirt sweatshirt yeah there you go uh so let's run through the scores there for experimental bush brian steck 2020 legend moak mother of all cubs 192 john wisdom in a 2019 moak 197 Ooh, that's, that's right. getting competitive. That's pretty close. Let's talk about Mike Lemons in third place out of the semifinals 235 Luke Spore in a 2019 Moac, 252. And then Keith Geiger in fifth place. He's in a very unique aircraft. He's not a Moac. It's called a Badlands Traveler. It looks like a Cub. You and I actually misidentified we it did. as we a did. Cub originally. And then it went by a taxi by and I said, wait a minute. Those wings look a lot like my Cessna 172's and wings. You spotted it off of the wings. And Ryan, Think I got I to gotta get props, buddy. I oh, I appreciate props. that. You, did, you, you spotted that, and I, I missed it. So the Badlands Traveler experimental aircraft, what they do is they actually take the wings from a Cessna, sometimes a 152, sometimes a 172, and they bolt that onto what basically amounts to a Super Cub fuselage. And what you get is an airplane that can perform super well low on the low end of the speed range. But those metal wings, those Cessna wings give you also a higher cruise speed. So you're not going along at 90 miles an hour, 80 miles an hour, like some of the slower Cubs do. Uh, kind right. of an interesting best of both worlds type thing. Very rare aircraft. Not a lot. I think it's like one guy. Who does it? Who makes them. And 
he only can make like one every couple of years. He owns the STC to that, the special type certificate for it, and, and they are very rare, but they're good performing aircraft. Let's finish up today. Uh, let's get through the rest of the scores here. Light Sport, Light Experimental. Now you're seeing airplanes that are lighter than the Experimental Bush class, uh, also super heavily modified. And you're going to see today some real... Matt and I will walk you through it when it happens. You're going to see a lot of different approaches to performance. You're going to see people who are going really light with low horsepower. You're going to see go people going with tons of horsepower. Uh, there's an aircraft, actually, we'll talk about it. Steve Henry and his Just Aircraft, uh, Wild West Aircraft Highlander. <laughs> 80, 86 feet combined. 86 feet combined. When Take that, off and landing. It's number 44 over on the right-hand side there, folks. And that aircraft, when it comes up to the line, if you're right up against the crowd line here, plug your ears. Woo! It's she be screams. Loud. She screams. Hal Stockman, Flying Cowboy, 2018 Rands S7S with 121 feet. Joe Edwards and a legend AL-18, basically a, basically a, a PA-18 clone uh, with some modifications, uh, Super Cub clone, 240. Jeremiah Stapleton, Zenith 750. You're going to see right. you see a lot of those on the, on the National Stool Circuit. We have a legend, super legend, piloted by Mike Lewis, 432. And my kind of favorite, my kind of my favorite of the weekend, Jeff Womack in a 1934 Aronka C3. That's right. It looks like a flying bathtub. He's going to perf uh, compete or perform with the... Uh, the Air Cam. The Air Cam, which is an exhibition class because it's, it's twin engine. Because he doesn't have brakes... And he doesn't <laughs> to turn the he can't he doesn't have differential braking to turn the plane around to get it back to the line he has to get out get and out. swing the tail around so we put him with the exhibition class at the end so he doesn't block the runway for the other competitors no. I love watching it he's got to hang you were saying yesterday he's got to hang out the side that's right he can't see when he's taxiing so at, as we go and and do this exhibition class. You'll see Jeff hanging out the side of the aircraft with his face in the wind. You'll also notice that he does not have a radio. No, no radio either. Perfectly legal. Absolutely. As long as the air boss knows what he's doing and is tracking him and everybody is, is aware. That's called Nordo. Because he doesn't have a radio because that 1934 Aronka is all original. All original. It's a beautiful aircraft. There's no... No modifications whatsoever on that Aronka. And like only a handful of cylinders in that engine. Doo. And it's it just sounds great. Folks, it's a special treat to have something like that here today. And also, again, showing just the full scope of the Husky National Stole Series. Oh, by the way, his son will be competing also in the same aircraft. So we've got a little father-son. Uh, oh, there we go. We've got a little father-son. Let's, you know, let's see who can land this thing better. I love it. Going on. So I just got word in my headset that they've released the airspace to the air spots, air spots, the air boss. And we got that beautiful Helio Courier over there across the way taxiing up. Really large airplane, uh, really kind of a famous thing. Uh, old number one, serial number one of that aircraft. You're going to see that coming over here now. And separately, all the other heavy touring aircraft getting their run-ups done, getting their final checks, pre-flight checks done. Uh, by the way, I didn't mention Jeff Womack's score, 510 in the, the 510. mighty mighty 1934 Aronka C3. 510 feet total score in a 1934 all-original Aronka C3. Flying bathtub. And yes, that is what they call it. They call it a flying bathtub. It looks like it. I, I felt like, you know, 19... And also, let's talk about kind of the amazing progression of aviation history here 1934 we've got an airplane where the, i'm gonna make light of it but the, the designers are like boats go through water maybe boats will go through the water. air we'll make a bathtub shape and put some wings on it and it worked and it's cool and it's amazing think about what aircraft we had 10 years later exactly p-51s just that fast crazy just crazy 10 years we go from a flying bathtub to like super fast Challenging the sound barrier already, almost. Historically, Warbirds. historically, you are just a, a blink in history from the Wright brothers to man walking on the moon. Bam! The, the advancements of all this, and nowadays with experimental aircraft, 
All right, and I'm talking about the ones that you can buy in a kit form and build sure. yourself, and with composite materials, and and engine technology and engine monitoring technology, flying has never been safer. And with ADSB, you know, you you're totally aware of everybody who's around you. If another aircraft gets too close to you, you get a voice in your headset that says traffic. And right. They let you know that another aircraft is close. I mean, the technology is is it is so much safer. General aviation <laughs> Although is I will so much say, safer. I will say in my airplane, uh, when that when we upgraded and got that, uh, I appreciate. I preferred it without. I, ignorance was bliss. Uh, well, there you go. <laughs> uh, flying around fat, dumb, and happy, not knowing who's around me. I always say that the voice should be more upset. Like when she comes in my headset, she's like, traffic. No, I think yeah. she should be like really upset. That traffic. They, yeah, traffic. Yeah, traffic. But no, it's All right. not like that. Who in the crowd here is ready to see this competition kick off? Are you guys ready? You're like, stop talking, jokers. Let's go. get to flying, right? Here's that beautiful Helio Courier piloted by Charlie Ross. And I want to point out how massive those flaps are. Look, they go almost all the way down the wing. And remember, this is a 1954. This is an antique aircraft. Still out here performing, putting on a show, showing everybody what they can do. Got him taxied up to the line, doing his final checks, getting himself all situated in the cockpit there. And there goes that tail. It bounced once, twice, three times. He's up. Okay, now, the so, tailwheel touched right? while the mains were off the ground, and that's okay. Right. So I was going to – you and I had the same exact thought. Yes. We measure from the main gear. So on a nose gear plane like William Gilstrap's 182 here, we measure from the rear set of tires. On a tail dragger like the Helio Curry, we we're measuring from the front set of tires. And it's the last tire to well, leave the ground. That's right. So you'll see them today. They've got a little bit of a tailwind coming from the right. So you're going to see them correcting with that crosswind. And one wheel will probably come off before the other. The Bill Gilstrap. He's got the flaps in. Now you'll notice. There he is. Come on, keep it oh, up, Settled Bill. back in. Off. Now he's off. Now, see, he'll correct that in his second and third run, guaranteed. Okay? He'll correct that. He won't settle back in on his second or third run. It so, might make for a longer run, but if you come up and then bounce, they count it from the bounce. Here's Warren Grobelar of Naples, Florida, in his beautiful straight tail 180. And here comes Warren. Yeah, there he goes. Warren, and currently in first place, coming from the semifinals. Now, with this more crosswind slash tailwind thing going on it looks it's kind of variable right now between a little bit of a tailwind to a direct crosswind right. they do not have as much air holding them back i think is the, the way i could explain right. it to a non-pilot think of like a current in a river and here goes patrick. andrew patrick he's about to make his pull there he goes one oh, pull oh, and he's up very good okay for right rudder as you know when you got your ppl right rudder right rudder right rudder more in, right rudder. When in doubt, more right rudder because of those five factors that affect an airframe. And that's why that right, you got to have that right rudder on takeoff to counteract mm -hmm. those five factors and this crosswind. Mm -hmm. So he's got to correct for those five factors and he's got to correct for this crosswind. And that's why when you saw him come up, he just punched that right rudder and off he goes. But that was a very competitive takeoff. I'd venture to say that he watched everyone else pull too early and absolutely. said i'm gonna pull a little bit later the benefit of being a little bit later in the sequence yeah, absolutely he wanted one pull that's what you want one pull folks low and to your right here comes the courier now he's back it's gonna be quite long but that's okay because he's better to be long than dq'd for being in front of the line so now he has one in the books He's got that one in the books. He has two more runs to correct, and so he'll be able to come back and probably land a whole lot shorter next time. Now, these guys, you're going to see them crabbing in. They're going to have a lot of right rudder in, and they'll be coming in at an angle, crabbing into that finish line. 
And right at the last minute, some of them are going to turn straight. Some of them are going to let the wheels of the plane just drag the, t the front to the to in line with the runway. Bill's coming in. He's also a bringing a lot of energy yep. in. Hey, very good touchdown. Very good. Heavy on the brakes. Outstanding. He's Outstanding got that. landing by Bill Gilstrap. Very good. And you'll see, folks, he's got that yoke all the way back in his lap, trying to get some aerodynamic braking working for him as well as the – I'm sure his toes are just pinned and to the floor. And there's another reason for that. When you pull that – when you pull that yoke back, you put all the maximum weight on the mains. And you want all that weight on the mains because that's where your brakes are. And here comes Warren. Warren Grobelar, ladies and gentlemen, from Naples, Florida. First place from yesterday. See if he can hold on to it. Can he get it up? Can he get it up? Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh scratch scratched. for Warren. Scratched out. He went hard. He went a little more aggressive on that first one. So that's a scratch for Warren. That's okay. He's got two more. Two more tries. Okay, but let's talk about the psychology that, that's going through Warren's mind right now. So Warren knows, well, I've scratched on my first one. So instead of having two that he could cut it really, really close, mm -hmm. now he's got to take that second run. He's got to make sure he gets over the line on that second run. And the pressure's on for him. I mean, we're not going to, with the wind being how it is today, that's we right. are not going to see landing distances as short as we did yesterday. That's right. And here comes Andrew Patry. Also oh, with a scratch for Andrew. Also with a scratch. When we were at, we were we did a national stole did a exhibition at Sun and Fun down in Florida, Lakeland, Florida this year. Andrew Patry was there. Warren was there, and the comment was made to be that Andrew Patry's aircraft was the heaviest aircraft at the show. It was. And I think if you look at how he can. For all intents and purposes, manhandle that plane, yes. given how heavy it is. Super impressive. We were talking yesterday about this, and I think it's going to apply today even more, that this heavy touring class, given the amount of weight, given the, the horsepower per pound, the lit wing loadings, all those things together, this class is very much more about finesse, yes. in my opinion, than about raw power or lightness. Exactly. Exactly. And by the way, folks, you gotta wave at them when they go by. You gotta wave at them. You gotta mm. cheer. When they got the windows open, they can hear you. All right. Well, they get ready for the uh, next round. I want to remind everyone. Yesterday, Warren, followed by William Gilstrap, followed by Andrew Patry, followed by Charlie Ross. So we'll see if. The standings are upset today. Kind of laughing at Warren. You know, we got a pretty good gym over there in the Hampton Inn across the street, the Hampton Inn at Jennings. And he and I were talking about getting in the gym. I said, yeah, I'm going to get out here. I'm going to get swole for stole. Swole for stole. Swole I for love stole. it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the only place I've got left to lose weight on my plane is the pilot. But... <laughs> Um, Andrew Patry got a new starter just recently and okay. lost 30 pounds. A different starter, 30 pounds less. Okay, so if you're talking about the difference between 1950s technology starters and modern starters, that's right. a lot of weight. All right, here he comes. Charlie Ross, an old number one. Okay, come on up. Come on up, Charlie. So he waited considerably longer this yep. time. Because he knows he doesn't have that headwind to help him. Now, what's interesting, you can see this wind is kind of shifting around, and it's doing that. The forecast is for the wind to start coming from the south. And we're waiting for that wind to start coming towards, it's going to switch around and start coming from the south. But if you catch a tailwind on your takeoff, it's going to hurt you. But that is environmental conditions. All the pilots have the same conditions. And that's just part of the, uh, part of the competition. Now, if it gets too bad, the air boss will make a call. And he'll say, we have too much tailwind to compete, and then we'll have to sort of take a pause. Bill Gilstrap. There he goes, full flaps. And he's up. He's up. He's, he's got still up. He definitely had it on the edge there, but kept it down. And he touched his tail to the grass. Yeah. Did you see that? Now yeah, he, made a little rut there. Uh, that's right. He's got that spring steel coming off of his back tie down. Um, that you can buy off of aircraft spruce and it just skipped along a little and then it came on up. Warren Grobelar, War ladies and gentlemen. Before Warren runs here, I'll give you a quick wind check. 
300 degrees at eight knots. Well, that's got to stop. Full flaps, and there he's he off very cleanly. And there's a little bit, you'll notice all these aircraft have manual flaps. That's actually a big differentiator. You'll see even in, this, in these touring classes, they're always looking for the models that have manual flaps so they can be more in control of the application of that lift and drag that they get from the flaps. Uh, in my 172, it's electric. I don't have a lot of control of the rate. There it comes. He's gonna pull that Johnson bar. You're gonna see the flaps come Boom. down. There you go. Oh, good one. Andrew Patry's not Andrew messing Patry. around today. That was excellent. That was outstanding. I heard a couple cheers from the crowd. That, that was, was clean as heck. Clean, clean. Super so, clean. So that's a Johnson bar, Ryan, and it's in the older models, and that's why you see so many antiques out here flying around and beating around in the I don't know when Cessna switched over from the Johnson bar to the electric flaps, but um, I'll take you up in my plane one time. I'll let you do get around and play with it. It's a lot of fun because you can take that yeah. Johnson bar and you can go from zero flaps to 40 degrees in one pull. Slam it. And you can just slam it. And so when you're trying to take off, you take the yoke and the Johnson bar and you pull the whole kit back while giving it a whole bunch of what? <laughs> right More rudder. right rudder. More right rudder. Charlie Ross. Charlie Ross, ladies and gentlemen. Better on the touchdown this time. He was. He didn't go quite as long. You see these pilots are starting to dial in these conditions. Speaking of the conditions, so we're here at runway 17 in Jennings. Beautiful turf runway, 1,977 feet. We're not going to use almost any of that today. Yeah. But right now, we are dealing with, according to the observation 17 minutes ago, 7-knot crosswind and a 4-knot tailwind. That's actually not so bad, but he can do better. So Bill Gilstrap's coming in. He landed a little bit long. He's, these ch these conditions are challenging, and you're going to see these guys land long while they're while they're dialing these planes in. Now here comes Warren with a slip. He's going to slip, slip down. down. Watch him watch him lose that altitude. He's going to use that slip. He's going to expose the side of that aircraft to the air. He's going to lose a lot of forward momentum. He's going <sighs> to pick slip his it. nose up. Slip it good. Here he comes. Here he comes. Here he comes. There Not we go. Bad. Warren's on Not the board bad. now. Warren Grobelar on the board. That may be, I mean, look at how short he stopped. That could be the winner right that there. That could have been the winning run right there for Warren. That could be the winner. He's going to get himself one of those Swamp Stole medallions. That's what he's shooting for. He wants the one that says first place, by the way. These guys are so competitive. Super competitive. They're super competitive. Also, though, I, Steve Henry was on the news here in Jennings. He was. And he was talking about how everyone's such good friends because in this sport you don't trade any paint. Here comes here Andrew comes. Patry. All Had it right. really nice and well stalled. Yeah. By the way, I heard some oohs in the crowd there. One thing that's a good point uh, to make is no one is concerned about passenger comfort today. No. No, this is not Delta Airlines. This is not American Airlines. This is not any of your heavy commercial carriers. We're not worried. You might spill your coffee if you're uh, riding with these guys. They're going to bounce these planes down. And, and there's a science reason for that. The science yes. reason is, if you think about physics and forces and application of forces we want as much of the force coming from the aircraft i guess now i'm gonna I'm, i didn't go to science school i went to theater school so bear with me but <laughs> we want as much of that force to be applied down vertically right. into the ground as opposed to forward to aid in a shorter landing so the le the more energy you push down into the ground the less energy you need to overcome with your brakes that's right how would i do Excellent. All right. And and the more, the slower that plane is going forward, that's less energy that you have to get out of the aircraft to stop it. So you're, you're working your brakes less. You're using the entire frame of the aircraft. Look at old Warren. Yeah, throwing Warren. Throwing a shaka. Look at Warren throwing a shaka. By the way, thank you to the pilots right now for providing a little bit of breeze to us here in the, in the announcer's booth. It feels nice. Also, so, just love that smell, that 100 low lead 100 smell. 100 low lead smell. It can't be good to breathe nothing, in, but it smells really good. Nothing like that that jet exhaust. 100 low lead. There's nothing smells like it. Third and final run for the heavy touring class. Here comes Charlie Ross. He's got that elevator pinned forward to get that tail up 
Right, oh, the there, he there goes. we go. That may have been the cleanest one so far I think for that's, him. I think that's his best one yet. And it, you notice it was a nice, clean takeoff. Nice, clean. No bouncing. These guys are getting these conditions figured out. These are aircraft that are weighing between 2,500 pounds and 3,600 pounds. Just to put that in perspective. Something like the uh, the 182 you see here would be a good aircraft to take. Uh, buddy of mine oh. flies a 182 in Arizona, mountain flying, sure. backcountry strips all the time. Camps sure. in the desert. And as Bill Gilstrap just, oh, that was good, Bill. Keep it up, oh, Bill. Oh, Keep oh, it up, oh, Bill. Oh, Keep oh, it up. Oh, oh. He did Keep it. it up, Bill. Oh. Okay. Woo. Yes. Close one there. Woo. But so he came up and got into ground effect. He wasn't really flying. He's just floating on a cushion of high pressure air. And he's just drug along there in ground effect for, oh, man, what would you say? A good 100, 200 feet? Yeah, you got it. I mean, that's standard ta standard takeoff procedure, short takeoff, soft field takeoff procedure. Get that aircraft in the ground effect. Yes. Very clean for what he, he knew he had a good one in the books, and that was going to be a little more aggressive this next time around. Now, you know what? I always want to have the best conditions for flying. But I will say this. With a wind like this, this is kind of where you find out who's mm -hmm. who and what's what, isn't it? Mm -hmm. We're going to find out who's who and what's what today because we do not have ideal conditions. Andrew Patry. Andrew had a good takeoff right there, but he climbed right immediately. That means he could have stayed in ground effect for a few more feet. And off he goes. Real quick before we get a landing in here, I should be talking about our sponsors a little bit. First and foremost, we have to thank our title sponsor, Aviat Aircraft, as we are the Husky National Stole Short Takeoff and Landing Competition. Husky Aviat Aircraft is where luxury aircraft and backcountry meet. Many manufacturers claim to have a large mission profile, but only Husky can truly deliver with semi fowler flaps. The Husky allows for shorter takeoffs and landings to get you in and out of the backcountry in the most efficient way possible. Christensen, and I'm originally from Idaho. I've spent about the last 15 years up in Alaska. I've been uh, flying since I was a kid. As a young kid, I remember being out in the fields and watching the crop dusters fly over, and, and I knew that at some point I was going to fly. I really never looked back. And of course, living in Alaska, I had the opportunity to just take an airplane so many amazing and cool places. As of recently, the last year or so, I've been working with Aviat. Most of my bush flying has been done in lightweight Super Cubs and Experimental Cubs. Just started flying the Husky. I have actually really fallen in love with it. Quite an amazing airplane. My goal personally is to show that the Husky 
can compete against any of the other bush planes out there. And so we had the opportunity to go down and go to the Lone Star competition. Uh, we got there hoping for good warm weather and it was terrible weather. <laughs> Lots of rain and low clouds, but we spent a couple days. First day we just practice and really actually some of the fun is flying. Really hard rain, but didn't stop us a bit. We had a great time flying, practicing in the rain. And then the next day was just as bad. <laughs> and that was the competition. The Husky performed flawless, really did. So as we watch some of this video from the Texas Dole competition. Everybody, it sounds like it's gonna be awesome probably 10, 15 flying. minutes, maybe a, a little bit longer. Like to visit about the first being uh, airspeed. Of course, it's no secret to anybody how important that is and really all aspects of our flying. But one of the things we talk about all the time is landing short and without flying that airplane as close to stall speed as possible. We're never gonna get the most out of it. Oftentimes we see so many folks come in and they're landing that airplane way faster than they need to. They're going 10, 15, 20 miles an hour faster. Causes bouncing, causes all kinds of braking issues. And we come in on our final, slow it down to the slowest possible flight speed that we can do, air speed that we can fly, and touch ground at that speed, our rollouts are gonna be short. And the Husky does it so very well. I love it because of it. It's very forgiving, it's very docile, and it's very easy to fly. One of the second things that is incredibly nice with the Husky it is very different than a lot of these other light airplanes. If you fly a Carbon Cub or an Experimental Cub, tail comes off really quickly when you go to take off. Well, part of that is because it's a little bit lighter. The other part is gear placement and the Husky is designed with that gear a little farther forward, which gives us a little longer fulcrum, a little longer arm, and a little more weight in the tail. And at first when you take off, you think, oh, that didn't come up as quick. However, there's always a flip side, and the flip side for the Husky is when you land. You're able to land and you are able to get on those brakes. You know, when you fly a, a super light Cub, uh, whether it's experimental or carbon Cub, that tail comes up and you're really balancing carefully on that to keep it from going on the nose. And the Husky is so forgiving that way. You can absolutely stand on those brakes and you can stop quick. For me, I just love it. Translates into getting to better fishing holes, getting to better skills, getting to better ridge tops. And it's really the reason why I fly so that I can go just the coolest places that uh, you would never dream of taking an airplane. I watch these Huskies go up against the Cubs, and so often people don't really think a Husky can do that, but they can. On the short field arena, they can. Once you get them in the air, and if you want to travel, and they'll beat the Cub hands down in creature comforts and just being a really highly finished airplane that's beautiful, but it's also fast and it's really rugged. It's a super strong airplane, and so what a pleasure to fly that Husky at the Lone Star competition. Hey, I'm Chad, and I am legend. So once I decided I wanted to buy a bush plane, a Super Cub, before I began my research, I had never even heard of legend aircraft. I had heard of a couple different manufacturers, and that's really what I started with when I started researching. It was only through doing different Google searches and, and getting on the forums and, and hearing about this legend brand that uh, I began to really research them. and, and what I know today is uh, Legend Aircraft is the best kept secret in aviation. Uh, it doesn't appear to me that they spend uh, their money on uh, a lot of marketing and advertising. Um, they spend that money on uh, research and development and, and into building a great product. Another factor for me, uh, aside from the build quality differences, the, the willingness to customize, uh, the customer service, their, their willingness to sit down and almost do a kind of a, 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 a ground up one off creation. On top of that was the other manufacturer that I was looking at. If I were to spec out this plane as close as they could get, I was getting less value, a, a less rugged, less sturdy, not as well built airplane. 
and an airplane that ultimately, at the end of the day, was not exactly what I wanted. That plane specced out at about $100,000 more than the Legend Aircraft version. And what I ended up with here with the AmeriCub was exactly what I wanted out of a Bush plane and out of a Super Cub. And, and Legend Aircraft was willing to, to build that for me. I got that right turn, we're good. Let's uh, meet up at the compound group up. That's 10 4. Yeah, for sure, dog. Good little driver, straight on through. When it's time to recover and paint your fabric-covered aircraft, look no further than AirTech Coatings. Since 1982, our FAA-approved system provides you with a shiny, durable, easy-to-apply product. The AirTech system has fewer steps than any other product on the market today, saving you both time and money. While using cutting-edge technology, we offer a wide range of products, whether it's for work, play, antique or aerobatic we have you covered remember we make paint fly Amazing to see so many of our competitors out helping reset Absolutely. the runway for competition day. We've got Hal Stockman out there with a pair of pliers yanking up uh, cable clamps and things that are holding cables on the ground. So uh, pretty amazing to see everyone working together to get this runway shifted 180 degrees. But we're going to be up and running soon. Folks, again, if you are in the crowd, now would be a great time to shift if you want to be a little bit closer to that line you could head to the south also great time to go pick up a sweet swamp stole hat or something like that i guess at home you can't do that but uh you can't go get gator on a stick like i'm going to later but uh, if you're in the crowd that would be a good time matt sorry i, I talked a lot it's you okay. should, we no. should talk about what just happened there you were all you were literally idling ready to right go there. holding short uh what what was the situation on your end so my cfi had this old my CFI had a saying that was passed down to him, Mr. Dan LaRock. He's a, a great CFI. He said, there's always weather. Always. There's always weather. You know, you, you have pilots, they complain about the weather. Well, you know what? There's always going to be weather. Absolutely. So this time, the weather, you know, sometimes you feel like you're the guy who sits around the campfire and the smoke's always blowing on you. So we looked at the, the forecast. We made the best decision that we could make with Absolutely, the information yeah. we had at the time. I, I we, watched that meeting. I was part of that meeting. Right. We, were, we were saying, well, is it going to stay just as a crosswind? Because then game's on. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if it, absolutely. Just a crosswind. We're not scared of a crosswind. Nobody's scared of a crosswind. Well, maybe student pilots. Maybe a student pilot. Yeah. These guys are no student <laughs> pilots. But when you're, uh, you know, a crosswind would have been fine. But when it switched over to the north and it reached the point that we started having a tailwind. Now, you can handle a tailwind in a tricycle gear aircraft right. a little better a little better than you can in conventional landing gear okay and and that's one of the nice things about tricycle gear aircraft but with a tailwind like that with you don't want to do that and like i said earlier i said you know doug jackson the president of husky national stole mm -hmm. i said he's at some point with that tailwind he's going to make a call and and we're going to have to switch it but as you can see it takes time it takes time to switch everything we got to switch all the cameras uh, we got to switch the line. Doug is out there with a new can of spray paint, spraying the line down. And there's great debate at every one of these about where the start-stop line goes. 
There's a I lot. suppose, yeah. yeah. Well, we've got a lot more runway here at Jennings than we need Absolutely. for aircraft doing with, of this performance and of this uh, level of competition. So we've got a lot of... We can, we can be a little judicious with that, getting in the right spot for the spectators and the cameras and things like that. The other thing we mentioned a little bit while you were, I think, dismounting uh, <laughs> was, was that for the tailwheel aircraft in particular, uh, tailwheel pilots always really conscious of having a tailwind pushing on that back end because that back end is where all their steering is. Exactly. And if you get a force applying lateral, mo lateral pressure to that back end, particularly like quartering tailwinds, that can cause uh, what's called a ground loop. Exactly. We don't want that today. But at the and slow speeds we're doing at, at this competition, not probably something that would harm right. anybody, but you could bend some metal or Absolutely. at least have an exciting little loop-de-loop. And, and, -loop. and we don't want to have that. And of course, Absolutely. you realize the judges are right there. The judges are right there where the aircraft are taking off and landing. And when they ground loop, they'll ground loop to the right. And that would go right into our line of, of volunteer judges. And we just can't have that. Wow, that sounds very dramatic. Anyway, so we... Yes, well, the, plane, the plane has a choppy end. It does have a you pointy know, end. A and pointy, a choppy end. You want to stay away from the pointy, choppy end. So this little weather delay, we're, it looks like we're almost reset. Kind of amazing uh, that we're almost reset for... Runway 35. It's not a bad angle for us. No, it's great for us. It's great for us. I'm I worried think about maybe, the spectators uh, a little I, bit. I, I <laughs> dove in with my weather control machine and shifted things. And I'm going to pull up the weather now and just see what we're what we're doing. See if there's a new observation. Yeah. Here we go. Nine minutes ago, 350 at 5. Yep, it's shifting to the north. But, you know, that's that's just one of the things you have to deal with. In this, like uh, like Dan used to always say, there's always weather. Absolutely. You, you, you got to deal with it. You got to got to shift everything around. If we have to shift, we have to shift. But always, 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 we're making the safest call we can possibly make. That's what we're looking to do. We always want to be safe here at the Husky National Stole Series in Jennings, Louisiana. So now, uh, <clears throat> runway three five. Wind's going right down 350. You're going to have a five knot headwind as opposed to a uh, now, five knot tailwind. That shall we, we have? Shall we have another debate? Let's oh, have another debate. Have me, right? should, should we pick sides before we start? Well, it depends what the question is. Do we let the heavies run again? Oh, I, that's not. I don't know that. I feel like you're opening a big can of worms there. <laughs> oh, that is above me, my pay grade. Oh, we're talking about it. I guarantee they're talking about it. I guarantee they're talking about it right now because because Warren. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see what the man in the booth says about running the heavies again. We had some, all things considered, all things considered, pretty competitive scores despite the fact that the wind was shifting. And for most of their runs, it was a crosswind, crosswind. without a tailwind component. Right. I think I think maybe the end of the first run or beginning of the second run, I remember saying something about like, oh, looks like we're shifting into a tailwind here. Um, so that's something we'll have to keep tabs on. Maybe they'll do that. They're only competing within their class. Sure. So they technically all had a fair shake. So we'll exactly. see what we'll see what the judges decide. So we'll I see can, what the pilots are advocating for and we'll see I how that nets out. I can tell already that you have picked the side of no. I don't know if I – I would love to just see them go again, so I don't – Well, I'd just like to see <laughs> – I'd just like them to fly. But <laughs> from a fairness perspective, I think actually you see uh, Warren Grobel are taxiing out there in his 180, taxi. so maybe that means something. Are any of the other heavies cranking up? Let's not read into it too no, much. No, I'm not – I'm going to try not to. So, folks, again, uh, if you're tuning in, basically where we're at right now for Husky National Stole at Swamp Stole – in Jennings, Louisiana, we, we I've been opening the broadcast by saying, "Fabulous runway one seven. Now it's fabulous runway three five. We're under a weather delay here in Jennings due to a wind shift, an un uh, different from forecast wing wind shift. The winds were supposed to shift, according to all the aviation weather forecasts, to the southwest, which would have been great for us today." They are now more north, well, directly north, basically right in line with the runway with, with 3.5. So we have shifted. We're shifting the runway, flipping 180, the competition 180 degrees so that the pilots have a safer landing situation. So while we're talking about the runway, I want you to notice, and you can see it from here, especially if you get down low, you'll notice this runway has an outstanding crown 
on it. And there is a two-foot elevation difference between the center line of this runway and the, the runoffs on the side. Mm. And the reason that is, and I, I think everybody who lives here already knows, it rains here a lot. And if you want a runway that you can use, you've got to put a crown on it. And this is an outstanding runway, very well maintained, nice and smooth, and it's got that beautiful crown on it. And that was one of the things, talking about weather, uh, that we knew that if it rained, that the, the runway would drain and we would still right. be able to compete. Because we don't like competing on concrete. No, it's not, well, one. I mean, we'll do it if we have to. We did it in Gainesville, and we're willing Absolutely. to do it again. Yeah, well, that if was we have to. That was a situation too, where the weather, a lot of rain, yes. a lot of wet, and the reason why that the competitors here like grass. Well, one, tail dragger pilots love it because it's just a little more forgiving than a hard That's surface. Right. Also, when you see these aircraft with the super big tires, the fat tires, they wear so aggressively on hard surface and they are not cheap those tires are very oh. expensive and so frankly <laughs> just from a financial perspective you want to land on grass as much as possible with those tires just yeah. they're not swapping them out uh every six every, months or something yeah. and, every and every for day the, for the folks at home they're uh yes they are expensive but when you're coming in on a riverbed or let's say you're on the nick river in alaska or yeah. or you're on a riverbed or you might be landing on a on a sandy shoal out in the middle of the Mississippi River. I don't know anybody who's ever done that. Or if you're landing on a beach someplace, then you know, you got to have that high flotation. You right. got to be able to support the weight of the airplane. You got to spread it out so that your pounds per square inch so are really spread out so you don't sink down into the mud. Same idea as uh, you know, the dump trucks having those extra Exactly. Extra wheels that exactly. drop down for heavier weights. And also, if you've got rocks and things, yep. you want to be able to float over the top of them. For every, see, I did that. I did a little pantomime. Like that? Yeah, that's my, my float over the top <laughs> pantomime. So, yeah, so that's really nice for everyone to stay on grass. We prefer grass. Uh, so we'll see, what, we'll see what happens in a little bit when we get this all set to go. Looks like the cameras are ready to go. The lines painted. Looks like we're measuring a few last lines and, and painting some things. Cool getting everyone ready to go still waiting on the judges to advise whether or not heavy touring is going to run again looks like the crowd has shifted the as crowd well. has shifted they're getting themselves repositioned word from the judges that i just heard in my ear is that heavy touring is being offered the option to run again, and it's up to them if they're going to vote as a class on whether or not they want to do it. We're guessing they're going to want to take it just because pilots like to fly. So we may be going back to heavy touring. We may be going to light touring and then to heavy touring. We'll see how the competition progresses uh, momentarily. So, so if you see me drop my headset and run across, then you know that it's light touring first. Yeah. <laughs> well, you almost missed it last time. I had your back. It was close. I appreciate that. Yeah, Thank you. You, you reminded me. They would have taken you. It would have been like, and here's Matt Peterson. He's a, no, he's no, not. He missed it. He missed it. He missed crank up. I like, by the way, your plane is described in this spreadsheet here as so much dark blue paint. Yes. Yes. So much dark blue paint, really about 25, 30 pounds of dark blue paint. Mm, I see where you're getting at and, there. And, um, had a great guy by the name of Mike Buvins. I brought him in. He's a hired gun painter. Okay. And it's funny. Painting, just like welding, is an art. There's a certain art to it. And, you know, and you'll see Mike, and he'll, he'll warm up. And, and when he painted mine, it took us about five days. Miss, uh, Miss Tammy that you saw standing right here, she helped. It took, I had to call in all my friends, and it was three days of prep and two days of paint. So we painted it ourselves. That's amazing. And I uh, highly recommend uh, sending it to a company. <laughs> if you're going to. <laughs> you know, that sounds like uh, during the last, you know, t tumultuous year of a uh, year and a half now of our lives with the with everything with COVID and things like that. A lot of us tried to do a lot of things on our own. Absolutely. And I can think of a couple distinct situations in my home where we did it once and said, nope, we're you know, never going to do that. Yeah, it's kind of like sushi. Have you ever tried to make sushi? Actually, I do. I enjoy making sushi. You make, you can make yeah. sushi. Well, I mean, not good sushi, but it's kind of meditative. Yeah, good, good sushi. Okay, we I tried mean, it making sushi. It doesn't taste good, but it doesn't we tried even look making good. sushi and decided that that was that was too hard. We yes, just went out work. to eat. 
it's got the sticky rice and everything. For us, it was uh, grooming the dog. We're okay. like, oh, we'll groom right. the dogs ourselves because all the dog groomers were closed. It took us six hours to groom two tiny little bread, <laughs> loaves of bread dogs. <laughs> And then, and then I still needed to vacuum up the entire first floor of my house. So we decided not to do that ever again. And then, uh, separately, <laughs> painting, painting our cabinets. Not like painting a plane, yeah. not unlike. Uh, yeah, that took literally, it took my wife like two months. Two paint, months. To paint, her ca- to paint our cabinets. Looks like heavy touring is firing up, I believe. Oh, nope. Kenny Monger has fired up. Does that mean you need to go? If I see Jeff Pohl fire up. I'm going to run across the way and fire up. Is he in his plane? He's in his plane. Ryan, wish me luck. All right, good luck. Maybe we can do this thing now. Okay. The other thing you'll see today, folks, now that we've shifted to the other runway, I don't anticipate this making a big difference, but all the semifinals, all of the practice has been with a sight picture for 1-7. So what you might see now is a little more dialing in as folks have to get used to a new sight picture and a new visual picture as they approach and land. And everyone here at Swamp Stole, I just want to, one of the judges just came up and, and let me know that some spectators have been crossing the runway during the competition. I cannot advise you enough not to do that. It's incredibly dangerous to be crossing a live active runway during the competition. You may see officials from National Stole doing it. They've been trained on the safety procedures and how to do that safely, but please do not cross the runway here at the competition. Absolutely no crossing the runway, please. Thank you very much. Okay, folks, we are almost ready. Thank you again so much for your patience as we reset that runway due to shifting wind conditions. Light touring class back and ready to go. As a recap, that light touring class, Cessna 150s, 152s, 170s, 172s, malls, Stinson 108s. Today it is primarily 172s. We got a 170 and a Cherokee 180 taxiing up to the line right now. That's piloted by Jeffrey Abrams, this beautiful white and blue Cherokee 180. We've been talking a lot about how that is not a standard airplane that you would normally think of for short takeoff and landing. But in the hands of Jeff, it is making some incredibly short takeoff and landing, which should give you confidence if you fly one of these air quotes, normal airplanes. You can do a lot with a, with a little bit, well, maybe a lot of it, of <laughs> practice. And as we get ready to, to see the light touring class begin, I want to shout out again to our headline sponsor, Aviat Aircraft, makers of the Husky, where luxury aircraft and backcountry meet, you're going to find Aviat Husky. They allow for shorter takeoffs and landings to get you in and out of the backcountry in the most efficient way possible. The Aviat Husky is faster, stronger, and it's more. And there goes Jeff Abrams in the 180 probably a lot happier to have that headwind. Happier to have that, that headwind against him. 
Here comes Kenneth Monger in a 172, 1957, dragging the tail. And he's off and running. You'll see him modulate those flapsers. He's trying to find the best combination for the best lift. He'll be retracting them shortly. Typically what you will see is pilots getting airborne, flying in ground effect until they get to a certain predetermined speed and then climbing a little more aggressively. Here goes Matt Peterson, my co-host. He's got that stick way back. Left wheel's finally off the ground, crabbing into the wind. He's sinking a little bit. There he goes, up, up, and away. And a former National Stoll announcer and heavy com competitive, heavy competitor? He's not a heavy guy. I don't know what I'm trying to say here. Jeff Pohl. Strong competitor is what I was trying to say. Jeff Pohl in the Cessna 170. Really giving it the beans there off and to the ground. And folks, again, now perfect timing. Low and to your left. Jeff Abrams in the Cherokee. Going for the lower approach. He's got to keep it off. They say it's good. Now he's got to get it stopped. Heavy on the brakes. You can see when the tail kind of fell back down there. So a good first run for Jeff Abrams. You always want to get one in the books before you start getting too aggressive. Again on the left, Kenny Monger, 1957 Cessna 172. He's got those flaps all the way down. He's doing a little bit different approach than Jeff did. Coming in a little bit higher, dragging it in, as we would say. Whoo, saved it with a little bounce of power. Full yoke back to get that aerodynamic braking, to keep the weight also on the mains. Heavy on the brakes. He'll be happy with that one again on the board. So far, no DQs in light touring. Here comes Matt Peterson. Also trying the low approach. Little bump of power. That's a scratch for Matt. That's all right. He's got two more tries. So a scratch for Matt on that one. So now he's got to get a little more careful on his second round. And now Jeff Pohl, high and to the left. You're going to see a different approach type here with Jeff, I imagine. Jeff Pohl, the current leader coming out of the semifinals with a combined score of 232. That's good. Very short. That looks to me like maybe 175 on the landing distance. But I'm not a judge. Yesterday, winds were a little stronger than they are today, especially we had that headwind. Uh... So his best landing yesterday was 119. Winds aren't as strong today as they were yesterday. They're almost kind of going between maybe we're maybe we're getting into light and variable territory here and there. Well, they taxi back, folks. I want to again mention some of our fine supporters and sponsors that make this possible. As you can imagine, there's a lot that goes into a competition like this. AirTech Coatings. Since 1981, AirTech Coatings has been revolutionizing aircraft paint. They've been utilizing polyurethane technology. AirTech Coatings offers aircraft owners the advantages of inherent toughness and flexibility, fire resistance, chemical resistance, and that great polyurethane wet look in an infinite choice of colors. AirTech Coatings will make your paint fly. We're also, a little bit later today, going to be seeing the Alternate Bush Class. Alternate Bush Class kind of 
dominated today or today at Swamp Stole by American Legend aircraft. Here goes Jeff Abrams for run number two. Got those flaps down, off into ground effect, building up speed, climbing above that obstacle. American Legend Aircraft is building the most innovative and advanced Cubs. If there's any notion in your mind that flying these airplanes is a sensation both beautiful and profound, you owe it yourself to try one on. You will see them a little bit later in the alternate Bush class with their mother of all Cubs model making a, a heavy showing. There went Kenny Monger with a pretty textbook takeoff. And on the line right now is Matthew Peterson in 4-4 Romeo Charlie. He was off sooner than the judges guessed. They're running to the line there. Good job, Matt. And Jeff Pohl, the leader coming into today in 3-1-1 Bravo. Excellent showing there for Jeff. Off, I think, probably, probably around 175 feet there for Jeff. And you can really see, I mean, there's some debate in the Stoll Pilot community about which type of aircraft is better. You've got the nose wheel, or as I call them, nose draggers. Like the Cherokee that just landed. You get a little bit more braking action, debatably, because you have that nose wheel in the way of the momentum of the aircraft. But the takeoffs of the tailwheel planes, they've got a higher angle of attack more readily. What that means is the, air, the wing, I guess the easiest way to explain it is the wing can kind of bite into the air better more quickly. So the takeoff performance on them is typically better. We've seen this weekend, at least. Kenneth Monger just hovering it in. It was it was good. Little little dose of power to get it over the line, and you'll notice those brakes were locked up. Just sliding through the grass. Close behind him is Matt Peterson. Oh, oh, whoo! He made it over the line, but he had to get a little extra energy which means he's going to be longer. But I think he's going to be happier with that than a scratch. It's also just getting, getting hot. So we talk a lot about density altitude. So quiet, I didn't even hear Jeff Pohl come in, but look at that, he stopped right in front of me. A little bit more than 150 feet, maybe 160-ish. So let's talk about that density altitude. So heat and humidity create density altitude, which makes basically the performance of the aircraft act as though it were higher in the air. Today, even though this airport is at somewhere around, yeah, 23 feet above sea level, we have a density altitude of 2,090. So the aircraft are performing like they are at 2,090 feet above the ground. There's the Colonel taxing by. 
He's smiling. I think he he feels good about his performance there. And Jeff Pohl coming in. You'll see Jeff Pohl and one of my announcing colleagues, John Jughead Council, really battle it out in the light touring class as the uh, Husky National Stole Series travels around the country. Jeff Abrams in the Cherokee, digging that tie down into the grass. Okay, let's get us, get us some updated scores. Here's where we're at in light touring. Current leader in the Swamp Stole Finals, Jeff Pohl with 338. Kenneth Monger, 407. Jeffrey, A Jeffrey Abrams, 658. And Matt Peterson with a combined score so far of 737. I wonder if he planned that. I wonder if he's sponsored by Boeing. So Kenneth Monger, not too far away from Jeff Pohl. There goes Matt Peterson. Had his personal best yesterday. He's got it off the ground. He's going to put that nose down a little bit to get some more speed. Jeff Pohl on the line as... Jeff Abrams turns base to final high into the left. Getting that tail up right away. So cool. Slamming that tail down and he's off again. Somewhere between 150 and 200. Maybe 175 almost exactly. Nice landing by Jeff. Three line back there. Short final. Jeff pull high into the left base to final. That one was good. Now he's got to get heavy on the brakes. Get heavy on the brakes, Matt. If you can hear me. Got it stopped. Jeff Pohl right on the line. So what you're seeing right now is really exciting to me is that a lot of these competitors are stopping right around the booth here. So they're really bringing it in pretty consistently among the competitors. So it's going to come down a lot to where the takeoffs ended up. So, light touring finals at Swamp Stole. Closer than you think it might have been. Jeff Pohl, first place.
All right, so these are the unofficial results. Of course, they need to be varied, verified by the judges, but Jeff Pohl, 1955 Cessna, 338. So he's the unofficial winner of light touring at Swamp Stoll, followed pretty closely by Kenny, Kenny Monger, Kenneth Monger with 330, 377, Jeff Abrams, 658, and Matt Peterson, my co-announcer in the booth with his best performance of 737. So that wraps up light touring. Here. And we will be right back with more short takeoff and landing action. When it's time to recover and paint your fabric-covered aircraft, look no further than AirTech Coatings. Since 1982, our FAA-approved system provides you with a shiny, durable, easy-to-apply product. The AirTech system has fewer steps than any other product on the market today, saving you both time and money. While using cutting-edge technology, we offer a wide range of products, whether it's for work, play, antique or aerobatic we have you covered remember we make paint fly Welcome everyone back to Husky National Stole Series, Jennings, Louisiana, Swamp Stole. And I'll tell you, it's feeling a little, they can see it, man. They feel, it's feeling a little, little swampy. It's warm. It feels accurate. Swamp it's a little, feels, feels, it, it's a little warm. A little accurate, a little warm. Uh, we're about to kick off the Bush class. Very exciting. Very, very exciting. And before we do that, I want to talk about another one of our sponsors who helps make this possible, Lad Gardner Aviation Insurance. If you're looking for aviation insurance, look no further than Lad Gardner Aviation Insurance. With an extensive team of professional aviators, they will give you the attention you deserve. Building a relationship with an agent that you can trust and who has the work ethic second to none. Lad Gardner Aviation Insurance is aviation protected. And here we go. We've got the Bush class taxiing up to the line let's talk about what bush class is it's the airplanes these are good they're gonna start looking more and more like the airplanes you think of more classically when you think of short takeoff and landing and that doesn't mean the other airplanes can't do it here it goes david weinstein btr jet there he goes come on david get it up here he comes here he comes now that is less than a 200 foot takeoff i believe less than 200 feet that was david yep. weinstein in a husky Lots of Huskies in the Bush class. Well, here comes another one in Austin Clemens. Austin Clemens, the one to watch. 18-year-old, 1,600 hours. Kind of taking the world by storm. There's two kind of youngsters in the stole circuit right now. There's right. Austin Clemens here today. And then Jaden Newman, who's also been performing all over the country in her uh, Carbon Cub. Now Whoa, Austin, heavy on the tail Way up, up on there. the tail. Way up on the tail. Now watch that tail come down. That may have been 150 feet. A little more. He's about 180. We will see where he was at. Well, now, one of the things I talked about at the beginning of the show, Austin Clemens beating up the pattern all last night. That's right. 
Practicing, practice, I don't practice, know how much dev gas he burned. Practice, practice. In the middle of the Bernie Allen concert, Bernie Allen's playing, and Austin is in the pattern, just beating up the pattern. Is, the, the musician said they've never played a gig like this before. <laughs> I bet not. His dad running out along the strut of the wing, shouting some coaching, coaching to him. Coaching, got to have a coach. Got to have a coach. Here's Kevin Johnson in a Super Cub. Now, maybe the most quintessential Bush aircraft. Oh, yeah. Everybody has to, to get their Super Cub experience. I got a ride in Mike Lewis's Super Cub last week. It was so nice. Very nice. We had a great ride back to Baton Rouge. Oh, now, I'll give nice. you a Lad Gardner commercial. Do you know who is insuring this event? I'm Lad guess, Gardner. I'm guessing Lad Gardner. Lad Gardner. I wow. called the good folks at Lad Gardner, and, and we got hooked up with our insurance. It was great insurance at a great rate. And, you know, folks, you can't just put one of these events on. Just willy-nilly. There's got to be insurance and waivers and there's all kinds of paperwork. But the good folks at Lag Gardner will help you with it, and they'll get you hooked up with some great insurance for your aviation event. Now, here he goes in the Super Cub. Tail up. 35, 100 feet. 150 feet. Look, about 150 feet. Here comes the judge. All right. We've got a great view here at the announcer's booth now. We really do. We're right at, we're right at pickup. We are right at pickups. Speaking of pickups. Sean know, Francis on the line in his Husky A1C model. Here he goes. Here comes the tail. Tails up. Tails down. There and he's he goes. up at less than 200. Less than 200 feet, that looks about, I don't know, would you say 180? Maybe, yeah. Give or take, yeah. Give now, or take now, one small note here. Uh, from the alternate Bush class, we have John Wisdom in the MOAC. The reason he's flying here during the Bush class, even though he's competing in the, in the next class, is that two different pilots are sharing this same aircraft. That's correct. So technically, he is not competing against the other aircraft in this round. He's competing against that other pilot flying his aircraft. <laughs> right. <laughs> Here he comes. Tail up. Gun racks are level now. Tail down, and he is up in less than 150. I'd say about 140 feet. That aircraft has a lot of different modifications oh. to it. You see the slats. You see the gun racks, which obviously talk add about, This is a good little time to talk about the stretcher panels in the back that yeah. lift up. That's incredible that he can lift up. The panel's in the back, and there's a deck back there. You can you can lay an entire stretcher back there. And here comes David Weinstein. David Weinstein and his Husky coming in. Coming in. He's about to pull that nose up, try and get it over. Did he get it? He did. He did. Thumbs, we got up thumbs up from the judge. Thumbs up from the judge. He's got to get it stopped. Yep. So you see he's got that stick to it in his gut, and he's getting on those brakes, trying to counteract those forces. And get all that torque down on those big tires in the front. When you were a beginning tail dragger student, you're getting your tailwheel endorsement, what you will hear your instructors say all day, every all day, day, is keep that stick back, Dembrowski. <laughs> maybe maybe they won't say the Dembrowski no, part. Dembrowski. <laughs> well, I'm tailwheel certified. I'm tailwheel qualified. And it is so much fun. Here he comes. Here. Oh. Oh, that was great. Great. Austin Clemens, ladies and gentlemen, Woo! with 100. Not messing around. 105 feet, maybe now, 110. We did not explain. That was kind of surprised people. We did not explain the difference about Austin's aircraft. That's right. Now, Austin gets no advantage on the takeoff. None whatsoever. He takes off like every other Husky out here. But when he lands, you'll hear the pitch change on that prop because literally the pitch changes on the and it goes into reverse it's called a delta prop and he puts that thing in reverse i hope he shut down on purpose he did shut down for some Good. reason and he dealt puts that delta prop in there and here comes mr clements outstanding you know, oh and here he comes here he comes a little more a little more uh-oh scratch Oh, we got a scratch right scratch there. Scratch for Kevin Johnson. Want to point out, Austin Clemens, with that prop, people talk a lot about, is that prop fair? Here's the deal. He was not in first place coming out nope. of the semifinals. He was 34 feet longer than Kevin Johnson. That's right. Even with that prop. So, 
Austin is going to be working hard to get that 34 foot. I mean, again, today, different conditions, different scores, but he's going to be working hard to get past Kevin into first place today. Looks like they're doing just a small little field little repair. Adjustment. Little adjustment. Little tweak. We're just making a little adjustment to the aircraft. Coming in here, I believe this is. Uh, who's coming in? Kevin Johnson just came in. This would be Sean Francis. Sean Francis. And another Aviat Husky. Aviat, literally one of the most common Bush class aircraft you'll see. It really is Huskies and Super Cubs, typically. It is Huskies and Super Cubs in that class. That's and a scratch. Oh, that's a scratch. That's a scratch. Now, you'll see sometimes they'll, the air boss will call it. He'll tell you if you scratch. And and nobody even bothers because it doesn't count. Now, that yeah, you is don't need the to get... challenge. I, if I could just put my best takeoff and my best landing together. Right. Oh, man. I'm king. I'm king. If I could just put the two together, but it's it's actually getting it all in the same run. Right, you want to have so it hard. Have it the it's the best run, not the best takeoff and the best landing combined. That's it's right. the best run. Best run together. And here comes John Wisdom in the Moac. Right. Again, Tail high. Oh, excellent. Dropping it down. We excellent. talked earlier. Excellent. You saw him balloon out. Balloon out. You saw the nose come down and you saw that gear come. And we talked about why that's so important is the more force you can put into the gear, you're taking that away from your forward motion with the brakes. Coming into today's finals, Bush class was Kevin Johnson, followed by Austin Clemens, followed by Sean Francis, and David Weinstein in fourth place. Here comes David now. Don't forget to give him a cheer, give him a clap, give him a wave. Here comes Austin. Austin can see you. He's smiling. Together. Yeah, rock on, buddy. All right. Notice his husky looks a little different on the tail there. He's got some little more different teeth. graphics. A little, a little more different teeth. graphics, a little more aggressive. Yeah, a little, a little more, more aggressive. Well, argh, bringing it in there. Here comes Kevin Johnson. Okay, so after that round, we had two scratches, so only two pilots on the board are Austin. There John Wisdom right there. Love the gun racks. Austin Everybody Clemens gun with 268 feet. That's a good one to beat. That's a good score to beat. David Weinstein. Here he comes. Here comes David Weinstein right now. So David Weinstein had... 508. So Clemens healthy lead right now with the two scratches. And then I'll get you John Wisdom's score momentarily. John Wisdom's 306. That will be applied in the experimental Bush class, which is going to come up next. Speaking of Austin, he's at the line. So David Weinstein just got off in about 175 feet, which is an outstanding takeoff. Tail up. Balance holding on the brakes. Here he comes. He's about to slam it. Boom. Up. Less than 150. Less, Less than, than 150 for sure. And what's really important, you saw how he had to fly along in ground effect for a while. That means he's getting the maximum performance out of that aircraft. Ooh, huge deck angle oh, there. Yeah, yeah. Once he gets it. Once he Homesick gets airspeed. Homesick angel. Once he gets airspeed, he's gone. <laughs> once he gets airspeed, he's gone. But if he has to, to slug along in ground effect for a little while, that means that he's popped it at just the right time. Here comes Kevin Johnson. Tail up. Love the style points of the tail, tail up. Holy cow. 125. Woo. Give or take. Look at that. Outstanding. And I'll tell you, folks, if you're flying along, even in a 172, if you get it off at just the right time, you can feel it kind of in your butt, in your yes. seat, that you aren't ready to climb yet. The airplane tells you. It communicates with you. It's mushy. It's mushy. All right, here comes Sean Francis. All right, Sean Francis in about 180, 190. Going to build that airspeed. Now watch, he's going to get his airspeed up, and he's going to really start climbing. 
and John Wisdom in the Moak. Again, I think those gun racks had probably five horsepower apiece, don't you think? Here he comes. And you know what? He's going to keep them. Here comes, here comes. Okay. That's about 140 feet. Very respectable. Very respectable. 140 feet for John Wisdom in the Moak. You know, the rate of climb. Here he up. Oh. Here we come. Here comes David Weinstein. Get that hit. Get that nose up, David. There we He's go. He's good. He's good. Now, I want you to notice the suspension. Ladies and gentlemen, while you're watching this, and, and people have come up to me and talked about this later, these airplanes are designed to take that shock. These Huskies and American Legend Cubs, they are designed to, to let all the energy out of that airplane. Look at the high angle. Look at his high angle of attack. Hot dog. Woo! Not messing around. I think he was already in reverse thrust before he touched the ground. He had a great high angle of attack. He did not have to drag that in. That was beautiful. Because if you're dragging it in, you're putting more energy into the aircraft as you're bringing it in. So when he came in at that high angle of attack and then flared right at the last minute. And by the way, in perfect conditions, you can do that. Absolutely. Perfect conditions. But there's always weather. Wow. But there's always weather. I'm excited to see what that score was for Austin. All right, here he comes. Kevin Johnson. Kevin Johnson. And very S nice. Oh, scratch? Poetry. I don't think so. Is it a scratch? They're debating. They're talking. Oh, we might have to go to instant replay on that one. They've only had to go on instant replay on one of my landings ever. I'm either great. Or I'm terrible. But, you know, it's either a pure scratch and I totally screwed up the approach or I've gone long. Did you see my little bounce? Did you see that? when I, I did not see the little I bounce. A little bounce. So yeah, you're fine. I got, a, I got a bounce still. Though. I didn't mean to do that. Here comes Sean Francis. Three-point landing. That's a scratch Very for good. sure. Oh, yeah. He scratched it That's out. That's a bummer for him on that one. So what's interesting about this and – and I'm not absolutely sure about that. You know, you learn a lot going to these things. Yeah. In a tail dragger, your best landing is a nice three-point landing, right? All three wheels, all at the same time. When these guys come in, they're trying to hit that tail wheel first. Right. They're looking for that high angle of attack. And they want to hit that tail wheel and then let the plane completely run out of energy and just flop. Yeah, and all dragging right. that tail wheel gives you a little bit of physical drag, which is great, too. That's right. Uh, looks right. like we have updated scores so far. Here comes Actually, John I'll wait Wisdom. John Wisdom. John Wisdom in the Moak. Seat tail first. Oh. They're Play saying it it's out. good. Play it out. Oh, don't, get oh, heavy on the oh, brakes. Oh, oh, don't, no. There we go. There we go. All right, our scores for Bush Class. Austin Clemens still in the lead with 260. Weinstein moving up a little bit with 440. And John Wisdom, first round 306, second round 256. So he shaved 50 feet off of that. That's right. Not a bad thing to do. That was a 125 foot takeoff and a 131 foot landing for John Wisdom. Again, he is competing technically in the next class, the experimental Bush class. But he's sharing that aircraft with another pilot, Luke Spohr. Now, I believe John Wisdom has been coaching Luke Spohr. Oh, that's nice. No, Luke Spohr is currently five feet behind John Wisdom. I mean, five feet in front of him. Uh, Luke Spohr beat him by five feet yesterday, and that's why John was out here in the pattern. He says, man, I was, I've been coaching Luke. I can't have him beat me. And just an important thing to mention, there Kevin and David Sean. Weinstein. There goes David Weinstein. David Weinstein's off and running. Kevin and Sean have DQ'd both rounds. So they only have 
One. One more to do it. That is high stakes. That puts a lot of pressure. Because now you can't, they have basically the choice. To, they, previously, what we talked about in terms of strategy, right, is that you would get a safe one in the books round right. one. That's your strategy. Go hard round two. That's right. Go harder round three. That's right. Right now, it's all or nothing. If you're two DQs, you've only got one shot. Here, Here comes, comes Austin. Austin. Austin in first place with 260. Currently combined score. A little bit of a cross when he's contending with there. Sorry. Retracts the flaps. You'll see a tiny bit of sink. And they retract the flaps that aggressively. And now he's up and away. So... Always dealing with conditions. Now, there's very few 18-year-old pilots that have more than a thousand hours. I mean, I, mean, I don't have more than a thousand hours. I'm, you and I I'm together, almost 40 years you old. You and I together do not have a thousand hours. Right? <laughs> Here's Kevin you and Johnson. I put together. <laughs> Here's Kevin Johnson. Uh, takeoffs have been impressive, though. 159 round one, 107 round two, but two DQs. So, would you say that the decision to flip the runway was a good one? Ooh. Not messing around on that one. That's 100 feet. He got off in 100 feet. That was awesome. Outstanding. Uh, I would say the decision yeah. to switch is always, always air on the side of safety. I dig exactly. it. And we got a new angle over here now. That's right. Sean Francis looking to get on the board. In his Sean. beautiful blue and green. Blue and white. Blue and I was like, what Husky. color is that? Is it white or gray? Beautiful it's blue and white Husky. Matterhorn white. Oh, there he goes. He's up at about 175. Very respectable. So his takeoff's longer, typically. Sean Francis takeoff round one, 213. We'll see where that one comes in. And here's John Wisdom on the line in that Moac. Part of that experimental bush class. That's right. And now what kind of shocks is he running? Acme Aero. Acme Aero Acme shocks. Acme Aero shocks. So on his, this Moac. His second run, 256 is his best run so far. Whoa, that's a 120 foot takeoff right there. Those leading edge slats too, just so impressive oh, the way awesome. they keep the air connected to the wing. Awesome. That was outstanding. Outstanding by John Wisdom. That's a 120-foot takeoff. And like clockwork, look, folks, to your left. Oh, I see Mike Lemon cranking up in that big, beautiful American Legend Cub. That's a good-looking plane. All right, here comes David Weinstein. That Rouge Jet. Going to have to do a lot to uh -huh, catch up to Austin. Uh-huh. No, he came in real long. He came in real long. He's little, little hot. Little hot. Came in a little hot. So that would appear, and again, unofficially, my money would be on Austin in this class unless something dramatic happens with Kevin and Sean. But they've got, they've got two DQs, and, so it's, and it's a wild card in terms of what they'll do. And you see, that's where the thousand hours kicks in. And that's, look at him. Look at him contend with Woo. that crosswind. Look at him deal with that crosswind. There we go. He got on that reversible prop. He got on that reversible prop as soon as his Alaska bush wheels hit the turf. That was outstanding. And he came in with a nice high angle of attack. You notice he didn't have to drag it in. He didn't have to burp the engine to give it just a little bit more power to get it over the line. That was outstanding. I'm guessing with the little bit of a tail pop he's doing there, he's feeling happy about that. He's liking that. that. He's, he's absolutely like liking that. I guarantee it. Okay. Coming in with that Aviat Husky with the Delta prop. Next up, Kevin Johnson looking to get on the board here at the finals. He's had two DQs. He's coming in on his third. He's got to make this one good. Ooh. There it is. He's good. He's good. Actually, it's good. that's one of the better that, ones he's done. That may be competitive. His takeoff was 107. And his second round and third round takeoffs were the same, 107 feet. He's flying very consistently today. He really we'll see, is. We'll see what the judges say, if that will be enough to unseat Austin. Outstanding. Sean Francis, meanwhile. We've got Sean Francis here on final. And 
Now you see he's coming in a little low. Now you see Austin really, really. Holding it off the ground there. Nice. Okay. Very nice. He's on the board too now. You can actually see his shoulders pulling back. Holding that you in. You can see his shoulders trying to restrain that aircraft. That is so outstanding. And I don't, I, we just got an updated score on the screen here. Austin's going to be frustrated. Unofficially, no. Kevin Johnson in the Super Cub. Again, 40 feet, almost uh, 37 feet better than Austin with 223. Here comes John Wisdom in the Moac. Hey, that's solid. That is a solid landing. If you were landing on a beach or a riverbed somewhere with that American Legend Cub, that mother of all Cubs, that would have just been perfect. That would have been a great one. Get okay. Out, do a little fly fishing. Let's hit the scores up. Unofficial results for the Bush class here at Swamp Stole at the Husky National Stole Series. Kind of a surprise end there. Kevin Johnson, 223 feet, first place, second place. Austin Clemens, 260. Sean Francis on the board at 435. And David Weinstein also making the board with his 1996 Husky with 440 feet. So kind of surprise ending there Very with Kevin Johnson ending. in the Super Cup. Very surprise ending. You were talking about shocks. Let's talk about Acme Aero Shocks. Let's do it. A Acme Aero, their focus is to provide products that make your aircraft safer, lighter, and perform better overall. If you're watching these aircraft today, Acme Aero Shocks are on a lot of them. They do a fantastic job of providing those products to everybody. Come check out Acme Aero online. Check out what they're doing for all these great competitors. I'm excited. I'm excited, We're going to head over to the experimental bush class next, see what the rest of those American now, legend cubs can do. Do we have time to talk about rocking on the runway? I That's don't know. I mean, do we have time to talk about rocking on the runway? We'll talk about it after we come back. From commercial. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't seen nothing yet. Yeah, I got that right turn. We're good. Let's uh, meet up at the compound group up. I right, turn four. Good little driver, straight on through. When it's time to recover and paint your fabric-covered aircraft, look no further than AirTech Coatings. Since 1982, our FAA-approved system provides you with a shiny, durable, easy-to-apply product. The AirTech system has fewer steps than any other product on the market today, saving you both time and money. While using cutting-edge technology, we offer a wide range of products, whether it's for work, play, antique or aerobatic we have you covered remember we make paint fly welcome back everybody it is getting hot out here <laughs> swamp stole here at the husky national stole series jennings louisiana runway 35 we're getting ready for the experimental bush class you may have asked or wondered how do you learn how to do this one way you could do is check out another one of our sponsors, Tac Aero. Tac Aero believes that backcountry is the ultimate destination. There's no vehicle that provides more access to the wilderness than a tailwheel airplane. Tac Aero's goal is to train pilots beyond the FAA minimums so they're prepared for any great adventure. That is what bush flying is all about. 
They've got a unique tail wheel program. Go fly with Tack Arrow either in Oregon or Texas. Visit tackarrow.com. And Matt, we are gearing up now. Right. Experimental Bush, John Wisdom already on the board. Don't be confused. Luke Spore now in the same plane that Black, Silver, and Green 2019 Mother of All Cubs. American Legend yeah. Aircraft. That's right. And, and to talk about Tack Arrow just a little bit longer, um, I'm going to talk about my good buddy Kenny Monger. You know there's a big difference between me and Kenny Monger. Kenny Monger is trained. <laughs> Here he comes. Luke Spore, the mother Spore. of all Cubs. Oh, he doesn't have that tail. If he had a little bounce, he's not going to be. There he Whoa. goes, though. Yeah, he's not messing around. I said he wasn't going to be happy with it because he did a little double tail bounce there, and then he got up in 140. He yanked those flaps out. That get a little, is little awesome. Burst of lift. That is great. So, again, this class today here at the finals at Swamp Stool, largely populated by American Legend Aircraft Mother of All Cubs models. These are very specifically designed for this specific purpose. That's right. Darren Hart up in uh, Texas. They build these airplanes right up there in Texas, just east of Dallas in Sulphur Springs, Texas. I was privileged enough to get a tour of the factory, and we got to see how these airplanes are put together, and it is impressive. And here we go, Ryan Steck. Love that blue yeah, color. Look, look at that. There he goes. Outstanding. So I was fortunate enough to get a tour of that factory. Ryan, and it is it is just amazing what they do to, to see professionals at work, to see a professional aeronautical engineer tackle the problems that are coming up. And this sport is going to end up being like a lot of motorsports. You're going to see more and more specialized aircraft. Here comes that Badlands Traveler. Badlands Traveler, again, very rare aircraft. Look at that. Look at him come on up also kind of known as the Cessna Cub. And the reason why is you'll notice that wing, it's got the little like diamond pattern on the trailing edge of that That's wing. Right. Cessna pilots know it well because it's usually been imprinted in their forehead at least one or two times. Did I show you my scar? <laughs> Do you have one? I, I have one. I think we've all bled a little bit I, thanks I've to those one, things yes. on the Cessnas. Badlands Traveler, Cessna wing, Super Cub body. So people call it the Cessna Cub sometimes. Now, here comes Mike Lemons. Look at the tires on that thing and the paint job. That is a gorgeous aircraft. And Mike Lemons pulling back up in 125. Mike Lemons, ladies and gentlemen, up in 125 feet. Outstanding in that American Legend Cub. That's okay. A, that's a great paint job. I know the paint. They job. all have really good know, paint jobs, yeah. You're like, well, the paint job's not supposed to help, but I think the paint job helps. Yeah, I think it, it doesn't <laughs> hurt. <laughs> Luke Spore coming around in that. 2019 MOAC. We were talking earlier about this aircraft. It's got some unique right. features. You can configure it into three seats if you want to. I think it's got like right. a jump seat in the back. You can also uh, configure it for search and rescue. You could have a li you mentioned earlier. You could have a, a litter, litter patient, like you know, stretcher patient in the back there, get you out of some really tight spots. You just you just never know. You never know what you're going to need. And here comes Luke coming in with that MOAC, bringing that nose up. Get that nose up, Luke. Get that nose up. There he Clearly goes. Got, Not bad. The line. Not bad. He's more than 150. He's more than 150. John Wisdom's going to like that. Now, low and to your left, Brian Steck. Can you hear me? All right, here comes Brian Steck. Getting that nose up. Going to touch that tail wheel first. Nope. Held it off, though. Retracting the flaps. Kill the lift. 160 feet. Not bad. I love that you're just figuring out where we're at right now. Not bad at all. Not totals will be coming in soon for this first first round. Here comes Keith Geiger and the Badlands Traveler. Playing it kind of dangerous, a little close there. 
He's, he's got, got it over, back. though. He did. He got it over. Now he can just get that tail up. Get on the brakes. Get on the brakes. Bit longer for him on that one, but That's it's right. good. Again, we want to be safe this first round in terms of get making one. sure that we're on the board. You got to get on the board. You know, a friend of mine, Clay, was a rodeo guy. He says you got to catch your cows. So you got to make sure you get one on the board. And in rodeo, as long as you catch your cow, you've got to score. But if you get in a hurry and the calf gets away, well, then you don't get any score. These guys are all trying to catch their cows. And here comes Mike Lemons in that beautiful American Legend Cub. Okay. That was pretty. That was pretty. I don't. I mean, you know, the, the, the score is nice, but let's just be honest about the landing. The landing was gorgeous. That was absolutely gorgeous. Now, that being said, he didn't really work out his gear. He no. didn't really play his gear completely out, but it was a beautiful, beautiful landing. All right, here they come. Here's Luke. Here. All right, here we go with Luke Spore coming up to the line there. A lot of folks, a lot of folks at the, uh, the kind of like practice session afterwards last night were getting some demo rides. Some of the pilots, you know, they always take each other for rides in the airplanes to kind of show off what they're doing, exactly. show off techniques. A lot of people were coming back from getting a lift in the MOAC totally blown away by how slow it stalls exactly just super super slow like sub 30 is what i heard from one person here he goes yanking it off all right it's there we go feet. outstanding now watch this climb Huge as vertical he climbs there. Out. watch him climb out there ladies and gentlemen now that's in case you're down in a valley a riverbed and you need to gain altitude quickly to have that kind of performance Coming right off of a takeoff, that's that's where it makes a difference. And that's why these are backcountry aircraft. I will say I am partial to the blue paint job. Yes, the blue and the, and the checker on the tail. You like the checker on the tail. Here he comes. Now you'll notice those, those leading edge slats pop open. They'll pop open whenever they're needed, and then they'll close back down for cruise. But it is really impressive to see these guys coming in with those slats wide open. Man, those things can climb. All right. Here comes our Badlands Traveler. That's Keith Geiger. Keith Geiger's got that tail high, high, high. And he's bouncing it, bouncing it. And I just got word that we have an engine out. Here he comes. He's Situation coming Situation on the uh, blue Moak. Looks like he's going to be coming for the field right there. That's okay. He's going to be able to bring it in. He's going to be able to bring it in and make a landing perfectly safe. Nice and smooth. Heavy Very on the brakes. Very nice. Very nice. It says engine out, but his engine's still going. And that right there, folks... One round of applause. Very good for Keith for that, Geiger. That Outstanding. Brian Steck. Brian Steck. Brian I'm Steck. Sorry. Round of uh, okay. he said, he, we're hearing we're hearing on the radio he's uh, engines back online, no problems, but what a great landing there and also what a great demonstration of why these skills exactly. are so important. Here it goes, here it goes Mike Lemon. He's got a kick. Whoa. Oh, no, there I see what go. he's doing. He's taking advantage of that head. He's taking advantage of that crosswind. Outstanding. Winds like are, sorry to interrupt. Winds no. are light. You need to grab every ounce of co extra competitive edge you edge. can. That's right. So I just want to talk again. That this is why. somewhat impossible to turn is what it's called back after he had engine trouble coming into land. One, fat tires help you land on the grass, no big deal. That's true of most That's aircraft. Right. But two, all of those techniques, you saw him apply all of those short takeoff and landing techniques 
back there behind the, the row of aircraft, heavy on the brakes, stick to control, all that jazz. Really, really impressive uh, bringing it back home there. Not sure what's going to be happening with Brian in terms of if he's got the oh, issue wow. resolved or not, but we'll find out soon. Meanwhile, Luke Spohr. In the mother of all Cubs. Coming in. Beautiful landing. Very nice. It's going to stop at 175. They'll get their, their measurement and wave him on. So that would put this now as Keith Geiger in the Badlands Traveler low and to your left. Keith's dragging it in. Dragging it in, nose up, nose up. He's good. He's good. He's really He's good. close to the line there. Really close to the line. Outstanding. Keith Geiger. So Keith Geiger's first round, 369. His second round takeoff was 160. We'll wait for the landing report to come in. But 369 for Keith so far. That was last round. Very good. And we just heard uh, in our headsets that Brian Steck is going to remove himself from the rest of the rounds based on that uh, engine problem he just had. So he is pulling himself out for safety. Always a good choice. Always the right choice. And whenever these pilots sense any kind of problems with their aircraft, I mean, look, let's face it. We've got a bunch of very complicated aircraft here. If any time you have any kind of mechanical issues, they pull themselves. Now, here comes Mr. Mike Lemons. He's trying to take advantage of that crosswind a little bit. He started on the left side, and then he's going to turn it to the... Oh, great landing. Great landing. Just a little more than 150, maybe 165. 160 feet, maybe, yeah. 160, we'll 165. See, we'll see what, so his first round was 295. His second round takeoff, 162. He's the man with the lemons. Outstanding. And you saw him. He was coming in on the right side of the runway looking to to turn it back to the left and land when when life gives you lemons you make life take the lemons back <laughs> this is what happens when you fly in you got to get across get escorted across the runway but you got to get the babies across too So again, a little bit of drama in there the experimental go. Bush class. Brian Steck. Keith Geiger coming by, holding his tail up, showing off. Yeah, a little st style points there for Keith Geiger. Absolutely, but little style points. Mike Lemons, that beautiful paint job, like that American flag on the tail. All right, here he goes. Luke Spore, ladies and gentlemen. So talking to the uh, judges in the booth, Brian Steck did get a complete circuit in, so he will be on the board. He's on the board here at the finals. Currently in fourth place is what I'm hearing, but he's still on the board because he did complete, complete a circuit and uh, did, again, as a reminder, just remove himself from competition to problem shoot the, uh, the aircraft there. Here comes Keith Geiger. Getting that tail up right away. Oh, no, don't have a prop strike. There he goes, 140. Outstanding. These guys will pull, pull back so hard, Ryan, you'll see that tail bounce off of the grass when they take off. Well, Bush, Bush class competitor Austin Clemens had uh, actually had a tailwheel fail. Yes, he did. In the practice on Thursday. They had to order parts and, and have the parts overnighted here, and they made the repair, and Austin got right back in it. Here comes Mike Lemons, currently in second place. He's in second place. He's got that tail up. You see that right rudder? Wow! 150, maybe. So his, Mike Lemon's best round was his first round. 
with a takeoff of around uh, 195, I think is what I saw in the graphics package there. So 160 on that takeoff. If he can match that up with a good landing here. He may be able to beat his best and, and improve his, his standing there for sure. Yeah, that's right. Luke Spohr is kind of high uh, base to final turn now to your left, folks. I could probably say stop saying to the left, but <laughs> hopefully you've figured it out that they're to the left by now. Con consider that <laughs> you and I are just facing left the entire time. That's good. Yesterday it was to the right, so we're evening it out now. So do we have a little minute to talk about rocking the runway in Sunrise, Louisiana, that's going to be going on tonight with the Shell yeah, go the, for it. Yeah. The, the Shell Aerobatics team will be performing 6 p.m. Sunrise, Louisiana. Rocking the runway. This is a fundraiser for a school for special needs kids. It's right up the road in Sunrise, Louisiana. The entrance fee is $25, and it'll be going on right after this. And here's Luke Spore coming in. Okay, so nice Luke Spore's first round, 299. Second round, 338. He's going the wrong way. He's at 175 on that one, 175. So we'll see what the landing is for Luke Sparrow. He's got to beat 299 as best was a first round. Now, here comes the Badlands Traveler, piloted by Keith Geiger. Low. He's going low. He's going to drag it in. If he chops the throttle at the right time, there he goes. And get that thing stopped. Okay. A little bit of brake fade there for him, I think. Now, when the plane turns, Ryan, whatever forward main gear, the forward main gear is where the measurement is taken from. So, you know, you'll see these guys, they'll come in and they'll land and they'll turn a little sideways sometimes, whether it's by brake fade or on purpose. And when that forward gear goes forward, that is the spot that the judge will measure from. Whatever, whatever tire is furthest, furthest from the line. Except for me, because they don't count the front. They don't count the front one. The, whatever main gear. Here we go. Whatever main gear. Here's Mike Lemon coming in. You can see he came into the left, to the right. Oh, he scratched out. Scratched, scratched out. out. Lots oh, of strategy that's, oh, coming that's from Mike Lemons, though. Yeah, he's thinking about it hard. Look, he's, he's doing a great job today using the conditions that were given to him, you know. You, you can't control the wind, but you can't adjust the sails. So he's using, you know, he's being served these conditions, so he has to fly to those conditions. And I would just like to add, I'm not sure if his tires are big enough. Oh, no, no. They he could, totally could probably bigger. put bigger tires on that plane. Wait, you could put helium in those tires. We, could, we talked about that yesterday. You yeah, could you could helium. put helium in the so, tires. So, I, I mean, know. there's some advantage. The tires don't just look pretty. We talked about the advantages you get from... Uh, from terrain coverage, but you also get better angle of attack when you start. So That's something right. to consider. Let me get you the unofficial results. Swamp stole. This is the Clemens Aviation unofficial results here. Experimental Bush class. John Wisdom, who we saw in the circuits last time, 256. Mike Lemons, second place, 295. Luke Spore. Oh, it's going to hurt. 299. Oh. That's close. You know what's wow. going to hurt even more? Brian Steck, 300. Just a foot one difference foot between difference four between. and five. Of course, Brian Steck only had one run that round due That's to the right. engine problems he had. Keith Geiger in the Badlands Traveler, 337. That's an incredibly tight grouping. Yes, look how tight that is. Look how tight that is. That's incredible. 256, 337. That is, that is com competition, ladies and gentlemen. That is a really tight competition. Speaking of tight competition, let's talk about the radios we're using to keep it tight let's out do here. It. Rugged Radios. National Stoll is using Rugged Radios for all of our race and competition communications. Anytime you're looking for a radio that can endure a harsh environment, make sure to visit Rugged Radios. We are also sponsored by Clemens Aviation. That's a family-owned Aviation operation located in Wichita, Kansas. Family experience there includes expertise in aircraft sales, aircraft management, flight testing, maintenance, and airport development. With their combined aviation knowledge, they recognized a need in the market that hasn't been satisfied yet. So check out Clemens Aviation if you need help in aircraft sales, management, flight testing, maintenance, and more. Come on. All right. All right.
right turn, we're good. Let's uh, meet up at the compound group up. That's 10 4. Good little driver, straight on through. When it's time to recover and paint your fabric covered aircraft, look no further than AirTech Coatings. Since 1982, our FAA approved system provides you with a shiny, durable, easy to apply product. The AirTech system has fewer steps than any other product on the market today, saving you both time and money. While using cutting edge technology, we offer a wide range of products, whether it's for work, play, antique or aerobatic we have you covered remember we make paint fly Welcome back, everybody. We are, man, things are heating up both physically and metaphorically <laughs> here at Swamp Stole. And we are about to kick off light sport, light experimental here. Runway 35 at the Husky National Stole Swamp Stole Competition, J Jennings, Louisiana. And Matt, I wanted to just give you a chance to talk about another sponsor real briefly, Hancock Aviation. Hancock Aviation in Baton Rouge, Louisiana is one of the sponsors of Swamp Stole. So we have our great Swamp Stole sponsors out here today, Hancock Aviation, BTR Jet. And uh, without those guys, we just couldn't do this. We couldn't do have all this fun today. That's awesome. Well, we thank them for their support. Also, Cachata? Cachata? Cash <laughs> oh. Okay. Talk Cushata. to me about this casino. I'm not right from up, here. 45 minutes up the road. All right, we have the Cachata Tribe of Louisiana. They have a beautiful resort up there, the Cachata Casino and Resort, with one of the top 20 golf courses in the entire nation. We're also supported with a great prize for our most consistent pilot from Le Berge du Lac. That's French. Do you know what it means? Oh, yeah. Le, the, the boat on the, the lake. lake. The, le, le, the boat on the lake. The boat on the lake. Le Berge. Le Berge. Like the luck, which have given a great getaway package for the weekend. I was there just a few days ago. Just a wonderful, wonderful casino up there. It's beautiful, beautiful. Even the foyer was nice. Uh, as we say down here, bougie. Bougie. It was, it was really nice. And they gave a great get, uh, getaway package there that one of these pilots is going to win. And here we go. All right. We are off and running. That's Jeremiah Stapleton. Jeremiah Zenith. Oh, we had a bounce. He had a bounce, and the judge caught it, too. She caught it. The judge caught it. Sometimes the judges don't catch it, but she was too sharp. She caught it. Sometimes you'll come up and get into ground effect and bounce back down again. If you bounce back down again, ladies and gentlemen, guess what? That's your score. That's where you landed. <laughs> Man, it, it is getting a little warm, isn't it? Next up, Joe Edwards in the legend AL-18. Very similar to a PA-18. Super Cup right. looks a lot like it. Looks a lot like it. Looks a lot like it. Different on the inside in some ways that you maybe can't see, but that's an experimental aircraft, light sport aircraft. So uh, big thing about these, this class is light sport and light experimental. Uh, these are all aircraft under 1,320 pounds. So that's the light sport side of it. They're also light experimentals, like the next two you're going to see are a little more sure. classically experimental. And here goes Mr. Joe. Coming back, flew all the way down here from Bird's Adventure Center in Arkansas to play around with us today. He'll be flying home right after the competition. Next up, Hal Stockman in Lawnmower 3. You've seen him on the internet if you watch the Flying Cowboys videos. He's always hanging out with those guys. 
Rans S7S. Flew here from Nevada. And he's going to pick the tail up. You're going to hear that. There he goes and tail down. Notice no tail Ooh, wheel on that airplane. All he has a tail skid. Yeah, kicking it old school with the tail skid. Tail now, folks, skid. if you are here joining us in person, I would recommend plugging your ears for this next aircraft when it gears up. It's 44. Steve Henry, just aircraft Highlander. Now, his blade tips are going to go supersonic, and this is going to get loud. Boom! I want you to notice the president of Husky National Stone, Mr. Doug Jackson, he's judging that one himself. What? He's out there helping judge on that one, and that was mighty short. What Steve Henry did a couple of sessions, uh, like, uh, you know, question answer Q and A sessions with him at Sun and Fun, and one of the things he said is a lot of times at these competitions he actually has to wave the judges forward. Oh yeah. No, you're not going to get the right angle on where I take off up yeah. there. Come back here, trust me. And, and they don't believe him. No. They don't believe. Him. Oh, there's no way you can take off that short. And then yes, yes, he can. Jeremiah Stapleton short final. Like Zenith. Excellent. He had a flare right at the end, and then as he came, to, oh look at him lock those brakes up. Trying to get that Zenith stopped. Jeremiah uh, at the kind of rap party last night, getting some feedback from some of the other competitors. He's relatively new to the sport, I'd gather, from the conversation, and That's everyone's right. really impressed with how he's doing so far. And you know what? That's something, if you've never been to one of these as a pilot, Ryan, I cannot recommend them enough. You will learn. You will learn so much just sitting around and talking with the other pilots. My wife came in. Uh, last night at <laughs> two or this morning at two o'clock in the morning and she came in and she said Matt There are six guys in the lobby of the hotel talking about airplanes at two in the morning. I said, yeah, that's That's what one of these things is like. This is where you learn When you talk about mr. Joe Edwards right there. That is decades of aviation experience coming in on final Decades of, of learning and research and he will share the knowledge that he has with you Did you ask him by the way here he comes? Oh, Look at that. Oh Oh, watch Ooh. out. Watch out, Joe. There he goes. He's got it. A little bit of excitement as his, his wheels locked up up there. Separately. Yeah, now that would have been really bad if he had run over. Don't run over that volunteer. He's my he's my consulting engineer at my airport. Don't run over that guy. Okay, he says he's okay. Ralph says he he's says all right. He says he's okay. Man, don't run I over I want to that. point out uh, my, my watch just said, loud environment. Absolutely. Sound levels hit 90 decibels. That must have been Henry. Here I... comes Hal. Flaps down. Here he comes. He's going to stand Heavy that the tail brakes. up. He's going to stand that tail up. So Less than 100 feet. We talked about this yesterday. Two separate approaches to the same problem between Hal and Steve. And Steve's coming in low on short final right now. Hal's going lightness, normal-ish horsepower. That's right. Steve also going lightness, but a lot more modifications in terms of the wing, things like that, and a heck of a lot of horsepower. That's right. That Yamaha motor, it makes 300 shaft horsepower. And here he comes. But now watch how he lands. Boom. Now, did you see the shocks play out? I did he see the shocks play out. He was completely out of energy. He was absolutely completely out of energy when he landed. Woo! That was there short. He goes. That was, that was short. short. And you know he's happy when he runs away. Tail, tail high. That's how you know. All right. They're taxing back down. We'll work on getting some scores from that first round for you in a second. Are we still on? Or did we cut the commercial? Just so you know, Hal is riding with the tail up so his skid doesn't snag any cables. Right. He's being considerate. All right, there goes Steve Henry. Good style points, too, to keep that tail Absolutely up like that. Absolutely good style points. A little showing off. There's nothing wrong with a little showing off when you got an outstanding aircraft like that. want to be real, like, I hope to someday be half the pilot 
as any of any of the pilots that have competed today. I've I have no Please. business competing. You can anybody can enter this in the right sure. class. You just got to put the time in. There's no there's no uh, gatekeeping here. A lot of folks are coming out with super. We've had at previous events super long scores, and they're like, I don't care. I just had a blast. But you had a blast. It's so much fun, and it's addictive. And here we go with the Zenith. Mr. Jeremiah Stapleton. Hey, come on, get it up. He's Jeremiah. up there. He's off. There he goes. Where are they going to count it? I, I think he's are right. Are they debating? They're like, no, it's closer no. to you. No, no it's no, closer it's to you. you. No, he's got it. He's, he's right. He's got it. Oh, he's, he's got correct. it. They're fighting about it. He's correct. He's correct right there, about 160. 165. Joe, Joe Edwards in this legend AL18. So now, did you ask Joe to, about the secret knowledge about a start? Here he comes, tail up. Woo! Whoa, that was excellent. Outstanding, like Joe. One. Way to go. Way to go, Joe. You'll be competitive here. Yes, indeed. So at Arkansas, Joe is, is kind of the de facto everybody coach. But he also coached Jaden Newman. When Jaden Newman showed up to Arkansas. Now, Jaden Newman can't be here today. Jaden Newman can't be here today because she's working. Here comes Hal Stockman. Hal Stockman. Whoa. That was a good one for Hal. <laughs> Outstanding. Hal. He heading into this round, he was behind Steve Henry by only 42 feet. So he is nipping on Steve's heel. Yeah, he's coming up hard for Steve. And, and what Steve was saying in, on the news this morning was absolutely true. The nice thing about this particular motorsport, nothing Hal is going to do is going to affect Steve's performance. He is performing against himself. You are looking to do your best. Now, you saw Doug Jackson move up. Yeah. There you Huge go. Huge vertical there. Just it, it's basically a helicopter. Yes, it goes right up. So now, but if you bought a Highlander and you had landed in a creek bed or you landed on a riverbed and you needed to get out of that valley, you would be able to climb out. And that's the whole point of that performance is that you can get out of those situations. And here we have Jeremiah coming in in his zenith. Ryan, seriously, if you ever came to one of these and competed in it, it is definitely addictive. And it's incredibly educational. You learn a lot. These pilots share uh-oh, nope. Scratch for Scratch. Jeremiah. Scratch. Bummer, dude. You saw him, you saw him, inside, the, you saw him inside the cockpit. Oh, ah. Man, that hurts. I, I do compete. I, I have taken second place in a spot landing contest. Again, we talked Excellent. a little bit about how that's different than this. It wasn't about um, stopping short. It was just about landing at a precise point. I will be honest, though. I, when I took that second place, I had practiced all weekend before put in i don't know probably like 30 landings which is a lot for me at the time okay. over the course of two days just trying to get ready to go and it still for me felt like luck that i would get second place so that puts it in perspective a little bit to me the stuff that you guys are doing in terms of your competition and the practice because it felt to me like i was like okay oh cool i did it like it didn't feel like i was really Controlling the aircraft right. with the precision that we're seeing here today, and in, in all of the all of the classes. Well, a blind pig, a blind pig finds an acorn every now and again, but luck will not be consistent in competitions exactly. like these. Joe coming in a little high, a little long. Yeah, he's not really worried about that one. He'll he'll make a good stop. But he came in a little high. Oh, oh shoot! Oh Lord, have mercy! We've had a prop strike. We've had a prop strike. Okay. okay, so the good news is, everyone, obviously he is fine. We have to get the airplane back That's on its right. tail. And you see the ones behind him, Hal and Steve, are coming. Hal and Steve will go into a holding pattern while we get this right. sorted out. Now, this happens more than you would imagine at these sorts of competitions. Now, the good news is it happens when the plane has almost zero energy in it. So they're going to let him down gently. They're going to let him down gently, and then they're going to push him off. Uh, Joe is done for the day. Yes, absolutely done for the day. After a prop strike, you need to do a lot of work to check the engine to make sure it's all good. That's exactly the right. The prop probably done. Probably so. 
Probably. It looks so. like it may be bent. I mean, typically after this, you'd have to overhaul a prop if it was salvageable. If it was salvageable, I think he's running carbon fiber. So it's probably probably it's, done. It's done. Yeah, they're look gonna, at that teamwork though, getting them off. Gonna the field. Get them off the field. We have this fine bunch of volunteers out here who are making all this go. Gonna do a quick once over, make sure everything's looking good on the runway there. And, and we're gonna make sure that Joe is okay. Joe looks good. Uh, Joe's, you know, um, Joe has seen a lot. And when you've got decades of experience in aviation like Joe does, um, then, you know, that's the kind of thing that that he's, he's handled. He's ready to handle that. So as we get ready to go here, we're clearing that uh, bummer. Real bummer for uh, for Joe on that. Just that's a that's a tough way to end the competitive day. That's right. But you know the most important thing is nobody's hurt. The airplane is not totaled. The Absolutely, the not. airplane's not totaled. He was at zero on his throttle. It's not like he was completely throttled up at twenty seven hundred RPM. Okay, all the judges are getting back onto the line. Here comes Hal hovering it in. Steve, Steve's what playing around doing? behind him there. I know what he's doing. Oh, wow. Look at Hal coming in and blunk. Oh, Down heavy he goes. on he's the brakes, Hal. He's good. He's good. That one's going to give nice. a run for the money to Steve. Absolutely. Hal is definitely looking good there. Love how purpose-built and bare-bones Lawnmower well, 3 is. Well, now you say that. He flew that here from Nevada. And yeah. he had luggage racks. They look like P-51 drop tanks. He had luggage racks on the side of the, of the, you know, bolted into the struts. Okay, so just hearing in my ears now that Steve's takeoffs, his last takeoff, 53 feet. 53 feet. And what was his landing? So a landing of 94 feet, ladies and gentlemen, in some pretty tough conditions for Steve Henry. And so now here he comes in. He's, he's a little bit low than he usually is. He's usually a little higher than that. But these, uh, these cross winds, and the winds are doing some funny things right now. I'm looking at the flags. Some are pointed one way. Some are pointed the other way. Looks like we may have lost the wind altogether. So Steve is going to come in. This is obviously the safe approach. You're going you're gonna to drag it in. You have more control because you have the power, so especially Steve. Steve has the power. Definitely has a lot of power on hold. This. Plopping it on. Brakes Lock totally brakes locked up. up. Less than 100 feet. But not too far different than where Hal was. That's right. That's right. This those is going to be look, a good one. Look, those two, two completely different approaches. But they are mm -mm, head to head every single time. And because nothing one does affects the other, they're friends. They can be friends about it because one guy can't say, well, something you did affected my flight. No, you're on your own. You're competing against yourself. Right. So you, like you remember yesterday when I broke my own personal record. Excellent. Here comes Jeremiah in his Zenith. These are insanely popular, and you can see why. There he goes. 170 feet. Let's talk about the standings right now going into this, this third. Is this is the third round. Yes, <laughs> I'm the third track. round. Oh, man. This is awesome. Uh, Steve. Henry in the lead with 152, but guess what? Nipping at his heels is Hal. Hal, Hal Stockman, 169. So it literally is anyone's game. That's exactly right. Hal game. could take it. And what if Steve scratches? He scratched yesterday. Here, come on, Hal. Forget it up. Whoa, there we go. Just a little over 100 feet. 
Joe Edwards again with that prop strike, unfortunately. 353, though, was his best. And Jeremiah oh, Stapleton, 562. Here comes Steve Henry. And here comes 17 feet separating Steve Henry and Hal Stockman. 17, 1, 7 feet. My boat's longer than 17 feet. That's nothing. These guys are so close. And here comes Steve Henry, ladies and gentlemen. Whoa! Whoa! Ho, ho, ho! Where is he? I lost him. He's gone. Oh. He, he went to I, the moon. I have to go, I have to look underneath the, the awning to see him. He, he's he look out from underneath the awning. He gains altitudes that fast. That's what all the that kids say these insane. days, right? To the moon! To the moon. There he goes. Got to get your stonks Holy and your diamond hands cow. to the moon. There he goes. Now, here comes Jeremiah. Jeremiah's got a lot of ground to cover, frankly. But, you know, I bet Jeremiah has had a great time this weekend. And most importantly, he's got to hang out with a lot of great pilots and learn a lot. No, and you've really seen an improvement between even day two or oh, day absolutely. one and day two for Jeremiah as he, as he gets used to the competition for he sure. He might have been one of those pilots in the uh, hotel at two in the morning. Here he comes. Brakes totally locked totally up. Totally locked up. He's doing everything Just, he can do. Grass flying everywhere. That was literally a 200-foot skid. Yep. Uh, that was outstanding. Here comes Hal. Base to final turn there. So here's our, here's our two champs, Hal and Steve, coming in. Everybody's quiet. Everybody's with bated breath. What's waiting gonna to, happen? What's gonna happen? What's gonna this is such a great spectator sport. Hal's last takeoff, 107 feet, so. And he's gonna chop that throttle. Gotta stop it Ooh, short. There you go, put a lot of energy. Not his best. Hundred and and you see how he turned just a little yeah. bit. So they're gonna measure that front wheel. So hearing from the booth that the second round for him was probably the best, it's probably not gonna do it. For Hal to unseat Steve. <laughs> Steve's last takeoff was 56 feet. So we'll see what That's happens awesome. here on the landing. And here comes Steve Henry. He is also cheating just a little bit to the right so that he can use that slight crosswind because he's going to turn it to the left just a little bit right at the last minute. He's, com he's coming in with a good high angle of attack. Tailwheel for... Nope. Three-point landing and locks him up. Less than 100. Less than 100. Oh, they're okay. saying more than 100 from their perspective, okay. it looks like. Maybe the, the perspective's off for us here in the booth, but so, so, only slightly more than 100 if it was more than 100. So talking about a 100-foot landing and talking about the camaraderie between these pilots, um, at Gainesville last year, um, while it was raining and it was drizzling, all of the pilots were lined up on the line to watch Jeff Pohl's last run. And Jeff Pohl came in, and he landed in 92 feet. Woo! And we're competitive. You know, we compete with each other. But all these pilots were sitting on the line, and when Jeff came in and planted that landing, it, the, whole, the whole group just went nuts. So what we're doing right now, folks, we're getting read back some scores with 17 feet between first and second place. Ryan, you want to talk about that? I would be, I would be happy to talk about that. Steve, 152. So that was his best score that held. Hal, 169. There's that That's 17 right. feet you're talking about. Edwards, 353. And Jeremiah did improve pretty massively between the previous round. Now at 502 for his best. So literally improving every round for Jeremiah. It's great to see. Now, and that, and I just heard here. He said, "But wait, guys, don't forget, it's not over. Technically, light sport class has Jeffrey Womack in the Aranka C3. Again, that's going to compete in the next round with the exhibition class because uh, it has no breaks. So I don't know if the Aranka's got a chance to unseat Steve Henry or not. I don't think so. But but he could technically, based on yesterday, he could technically." 
pop up into fourth place or third place with the kind of performances we were seeing yesterday out of that little Aranka. If he wins third place, he's going to win one of those special Swamp Stole Mardi Gras medallions. And I am sure that Jeff Womack would love to walk away with one of those in a 1934 aircraft. That would be absolutely amazing. Folks, uh, don't forget, you want to rep the Husky National Stole brand. We've got t-shirts, hats, and merch that are available both here at the grounds and also online at nationalstole.com. Make sure you check them out. They're pretty cool this year. Also, the other thing we have to mention is a lot of you have had your phones out taking selfies, videos. Make sure to pop them over to Instagram. Give us a follow, Husky National Stole. The, uh, the at tag is just National Stole. So give us a follow. We'll give you a, a repost, a retweet if we like the photo. We'd love to also have you follow us on Facebook at Husky National Stole Series. So that would be cool to check out all this stuff. I've been posting lots of fun photos and videos all weekend. It's been an absolute blast. And last but not least, before we go into our last round of competition, be sure to check out nationalstole.com to see future competition event dates. So we are going to be headed to Brainerd, Minnesota, just after That's Oshkosh, right. Sodbusters. So if you go to Oshkosh, hang out for an extra week, and the following weekend you can come compete in Brainerd. It's going to be great. You, you should check it out. Check out National Stoll 2. If you're thinking about competing, you absolutely should give it a try. All the information on how to do that at nationalstoll.com. We will be right back for our exhibition and the and the Aronkas, the mighty Aronka C3, which is maybe one of my favorite it, things. It is from the one weekend. of the crowd favorites and competitor favorites right here at the Husky National Stoll Series. What's up, everybody? Oh, man, what an exciting day. We've had a little bit of drama. A little bit. A little bit of excitement. A little, little bit. Uh, I'm feeling a little loopy in the sun. I'm not even in the sun. I'm in the shade, and yeah. I'm still feeling <laughs> I'm still Welcome feeling Welcome to it. Louisiana, Welcome Ryan. to the swamp. Welcome um, to the swamp zone. What a great day. Again, unofficial results are in. We've been, we've been relaying these all day. Uh, the official results will be in just a little bit after the competition wraps up because we have to double-check everything, cross-check our – dot our I's, add our pluses together. Wow. Uh, that metaphor failed drastically. Really cool thing happening next to wrap up the finals today. We've got our exhibition class and one little uh, bit of competition still from the light sport class. First, an exhibition, simply because there's – two engines on it we have this beautiful air cam flown by keith wall local boy air cam is uh quite large i think it I think, is it, i think it's, it's a big aircraft it looks a little deceiving it's quite large uh twin rotax engines there it's a multi-engine tail dragger also you will see it's quite popular to put them on floats absolutely um because that reliability of the second engine there he goes. Off Look at that. Off in 150 feet. 150 feet. That's why they're so popular. 
uh, originally developed, if I'm not mistaken, for a film that was shot for National Geographic, Air Cam, Cam for Camera, putting the camera up unobstructed right by out that there. fuselage. Now, look at this thing. Jeff Womack, ladies and gentlemen, he's got a GoPro on that thing. Sacrilege. He's got a GoPro on a two-cylinder, 39-horsepower, 1934 Aeronauta C3. And here he goes, ladies and gentlemen. No tail wheel, just a tail skid. Oh, no, that's his son. His son is going for it. That is Womack Jr. on there. Here goes Cameron. Kind of long. I think his dad's going to win. Okay, so I think his dad's probably going to take him on this one. Well, here's the deal. Uh, no brakes, which means you also don't get differential braking no. for steering. So we're going to see his unique solution for that in a little bit. Uh, we were talking at the top of the show about how, think of how quickly aviation innovation happened you went from that which i i just i love it so much you're basically yep. sitting in a chair in the sky you got to lean out to the side to to see where you're going go from that to 10 years later we're in the middle of world war ii with all the innovation that happened there such a such an amazing amazing kind of data point That's in right. aviation history that first takeoff for Keith in the air cam, 163. And here comes Keith from Jennings, Louisiana, coming back in, floating it back in. So pretty. So it's such a nice air cam. Great landing. Off. Perfect. He's got that tail up. Now, the one thing, and Dan Reynolds, I know you know who Dan Reynolds is, the Canadian who competes very heavily against Steve Henry and Hal Stockman. And I know he's probably watching this. So, Dan, I'm going to talk about you. One thing everybody picks on Dan about is that Dan never has to worry about a nose over because he's a pusher. Right. This air cam, Keith doesn't have to worry about a nose over. He can nose over all he wants, and the nose will just get along in the ground. But Dan Reynolds, we're hoping to get Dan Reynolds down here to Swamp Stoll, but he can't get out of Canada quite yet. Still locked down up there. Still locked down up there in the frozen north. But Dan put some great videos up this winter to keep us all entertained of him with his, his little uh, aircraft on skis, skiing around on the snow. There's none of that here, just so you know. No. We're kind of skiing on the turf, though, with all, all these uh, you know, locked-up brakes. With all the horsepower these guys have got, I think they could just skid those skis right across this turf. I don't think they'd have any problem with it at all. Here comes uh, Jeff Womack's son. Cameron. Cameron Womack. Who is a student. Holding it off. That's oh, a scratch. That's okay. That's a scratch. That's all right, Cameron. Shake it off, brother. Looking off the side. Really? I mean, look at how deep into the aircraft he is. He's sitting there way low. He's low riding. Yeah. And uh, you really, I mean, it's classic tail dragger thing turned up to 11. I mean, even in a J3 Cub or something like that, you you still have to S turn to see see what you're doing. Oh, look, camera's good. He's going to get it around. He's not going to have oh, to shut down Oh, he's going to get, get it out. around without shutting it. That's, that's there great. There goes. Typically there what goes. happens, folks, is he has to hop out of the aircraft and spin it around because you don't have the differential braking the way the other airplanes do. So that's super cool. Very I nice. am gonna I'm going to shoot a picture of him as he drives by because I don't think I've ever seen one of these in person. Looking great, Cameron. Cameron, a student at Louisiana Tech University in aviation. His grandfather was a Delta Airlines captain. His father, a Delta Airlines captain. I think I know what career path that Cameron is on. He's telling him to pick the tail up as he goes across the cable. Yeah, pick and, the tail up so that he doesn't... Uh, and Cameron's going to help him out. Look at that. Don't sever the camera cables Hot there. dog. How about that? How cool is that? Little traffic direction by Doug Jackson. So here comes the air cam. Nice oh, yes. takeoff. Yes, Keith's going to like that. That's a lot better. Look at that climb rate. Air cam is a, is a kit built airplane. You buy a kit, you build it. Uh, I've been I've researched them heavily because they are definitely one of my uh, bucket list airplanes. Imagine just uh, flying down the Mississippi River from Wisconsin to here. Wouldn't that be awesome? Low, slow in an air cam. All the visibility, all the visibility in the world. You can see everything. You're just out there. And here comes Cameron Womack. 
in the Aranaka C3. All of 39 horsepower. That's 3.9 horsepower. And off he goes. That's a little better. That's a little bit better. I'm, I think he'll be more pleased with that. Now, you know, something that we have to deal with here at competitions like this, when you're at an active airport, they'll shut down the runway that you're competing on, but you'll have people leaving and coming and going on the other runways. So you've got to keep your head on a swivel and make sure that the, the traffic doesn't interfere with one another. It looks like everybody's doing just a great job with all of our air bosses and ground bosses like that. Here comes the air cam, Keith Wall and the air cam. Coming in a little bit higher this time. He's coming in very high. Now, when he comes in high like this, that means that he's either, uh, there he goes. He's got the flaps in and now he's starting to come down. He's starting to mush that air cam down. Nice balloon there at the end. Landed a little long. He's landing a little long, but that's still a, a very, very good landing. I might just need to reboot the software. It's, it's not even showing uh, everything. And Keith will be turning around in that air cam. And now we're waiting on Cameron Womack, who's coming around in that 1934 Aeronauka C3. All of 65 mile an hour top speed. And he's bringing it around on his base to final. Nice and low. And here he comes. And here comes Cameron. He's floating it. He's floating it. He's going to drag it in. And very nice. Out of power and down. I don't think so. I doubt it. You know why? It's 143. It's almost 2 o'clock. We're going to so here this time you see needing a little help to get that tail around on the Aranka. One of our great volunteers here at the Jennings Airport, Ralph, is uh, going to head down there and, and get him turned around. I guarantee you that is the oldest airplane he's ever helped. That volunteer has never volunteer helped an airplane with, at all? Yes, I guarantee you that is the oldest aircraft. Oh, look at that. Look at that technique. <laughs> How about that? The things you see the things you see at a stole competition. And here comes Cameron Womack on the taxi back. Got a little feedback. Just heard the name of the uh, air cam. This air cam is named the hair dryer. I guess it would do that for you. All the wind in your... It's just such a romantic idea. Fly yeah. around in an air cam. You know... Wind in your hair. Wind in your... Okay. You had me right up into wind in your hair. Wind in your wind in your beard. stubble. Wind know. in your stubble. Here he comes. Here comes Keith Wall. Oh, very nice. Quickly. Very nice. That's about 120, 125. He'll be very happy with that. Outstanding. Look at him climb. Hot dog. We've even had a air cam on amphibious floats previously at that. a national stole events. I have seen that. And here's Cameron lining up with his all of 39 horsepower. 
Listen to that low compression engine. Not a lot of compression on that engine. Now that is a all original parts, except for the GoPro. <laughs> well, the, the and the and GoPro the, is harming his score because the, it adds a little bit of weight. I think it might. It might have a little bit of drag too. But the GoPro is not original parts to the 1934 Aranaka C3. But I can't wait to see the video that comes out of it. <laughs> that would be cool to see. That is going to be really cool. There's to something see. special about vintage aircraft like that. I just love them. I mean, I've got a soft spot in my heart after spending so much time of my, my training in J3 Cubs. Uh, it's just something about it, the way, they, the way they smell, the way they feel to so fly. Keith, Keith Wall came in at 126 feet on that last takeoff. He'll be very, very happy with that. 126 feet in these conditions. Now, that's... And currently, Cameron has has scratched on his first run. So here Keith comes, and he's floating it in here. Floating oh, it in. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. There he goes. He did Down. It. Down. Excellent. He was like that close. Yeah. He was just that close. Just off the, just off the tips off of the, the blades grass. of the grass there. Just off the grass, but he got it down. Love how big the the tail is on that thing. A lot, and you know that is a lot. Yeah. I, the the other thing, if you want to, I mean, do a little googling on air cams. Okay. So what I was saying in terms of the Googling, you should just, any of these airplanes, if you feel passionate about any of them, go do some Googling. Go, go spend some time. And I'm hearing in my ear, we're going to get a low pass from the Aranka. Beautiful low, low pass. Get your cameras out if you got here, time. Here comes that Aranka C3. Love the sound awesome. on that thing. Absolutely awesome. I think you and I, I think it would qualify as gushing at this point. Uh, pretty much. Gushing over that thing. So I was just saying, all these airplanes are so much content online. You can watch these feeds that we've been doing here uh, back. You know, they're going to be posted on YouTube, things like that. You can watch the competition and watch the landings. But also just go. If you're passionate about aviation, just lean into it because it is a hobby, a uh, a career for some that just gives back so much. Uh, all of my, uh, I have an entire, I have like two families. I have my immediate family and friends that I, I in, deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. And I have my Sky Fam. I call them my, my Sky Fam of all the people I've met at these events all over the country, met online, even just, you know, the last year when things were locked down, I was making connections through aviation with some people I've, I would consider good friends now and I've never even met them in person. It's all because we have this shared passion, this shared interest for aviation and, and something about getting to see the world. That's right. From above, the astronauts call this, I think, the overlook effect. That's right. It gives you literally and <laughs> figuratively a whole new perspective on what's going on in your own personal life or what's going on in the world. And you, you realize that we're all in this together. 100%. And you'll never find a community that's more welcoming or more, more willing to share information and, and welcome people into the community than aviation. They're, they're always willing to welcome people into the community. And separately, just a big shout out to my Sky fam. For all the support they give me on this, Absolutely. my Sky Fam the squadron, as I sometimes call them, it's just like great to have them uh, in my corner. Okay, here we go. Last landing for the Aranka. Here we go. He's coming in. Cameron's coming. Can he get it, it on the board? It. Wow, that's okay. nice. Nice, very nice. Look at the travel on that gear. Very nice. Now he's got to get that tail down and let it start dragging. Use that tail skid. Yep. I don't know if we're are we gonna score that. He may not. No, nope, he's just gonna, he's just gonna keep going. End. He's just gonna bring it off the end of the runway. Okay, everyone. Well, with that landing, 
that puts a wrap on Swamp Stole for the Husky National Stole Series finals today in Jennings, Louisiana. Matt, Ron? it has been awesome to hang out with you the last two days and announce this with you and get to know you. It's been so great to see everyone compete. And even though we had some excitement, we did legitimately have some excitement yep. today. Really, just really great competition. Again, we talked about the unofficial results. They're going to be tabulated formally now over the next 30 minutes or so. So you will have to, if you're watching this online or here at home, in about 30 minutes, when we get the competition boxed up, the judges will confer, we'll get confirmation, and there'll be an award ceremony shortly for the pilots that won. And then separately, separately, if you're at home watching this, you can watch it. Uh, watch for scores at nationalstroll.com. See how things ended up. We had, of course, the unofficial scores. But this has been just truly amazing experience. Jennings, you are amazing. Thank you so much for your hospitality to me and, of course, more importantly, the pilots. And a big shout-out to all our great volunteers who came out today and put this thing on. Without our sponsors and volunteers, there's just no way we could even make this happen. Absolutely, it takes a village to do something like this. Uh, if you're looking for, if you if you want to hear my voice more <laughs> after hearing it for hours today, check me out online, YouTube.com/slash Super Arrow. Do aviation interviews with That's all right. sorts of aviators, everything from the U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds to Bush pilots to paramotor pilots to. We just last week had a young woman who's becoming an aerial cinematographer. That's her job. Outstanding. It's really that amazing. Outstanding. So come check it out. Super Arrow. That's where you can find me. Uh, Matt, anything else to add? You know, I just can't thank everybody enough for all of their help for the Jennings Airport Commission, uh, the fire department, the mayor, everybody in, here in Jennings has helped us, but especially the Tourism Commission, Jeff Davis Parish Tourism. Did you go hold a baby alligator? I have not held a baby okay, alligator Okay, we got to get you over across the street to go hold a baby alligator. Well, I guess I'm going to go hold a baby alligator. I'm Ryan Dombrowski. I'm Matthew Peterson. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. We will see you in a couple months, a, a little bit That's after Sod Oshkosh. Sodbusters. Sodbusters in Brainerd, Minnesota. We'll be there. We'll see you there, too. See you guys later.